great win streaks. into the storm, the Pittsburgh Panthers. You may not know their names, but tonight they play to make a name for themselves and win a title of their own. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City, a game that could decide the 2002 Big East champ. Perfect in the league, Pittsburgh. Perfect in the last 31 games, Miami. Good evening, everyone. We welcome you to the start of the college football weekend with what may be one of the best matchups of this weekend. It's hard to believe that in this era of sports saturation, a record can be underappreciated. But that's the case with Miami. They've won 31 in a row, third longest consecutive win streak in the modern era of college football. But the Canes are on track to the title game, and they're in pretty good shape to win the Big East title as well. On the other side, you have the Pittsburgh Panthers, 1-5 last year. They've won 14 of their last 16. Now, to a man, man-to-man -man match them up. Pittsburgh's got no shot tonight. But this is a team that gained confidence with games at Notre Dame and at Virginia Tech, and all the players told us last night they are not in intimidated by playing the mighty Miami team in this legendary Orange Bowl. This game so big, our college football Thursday night studio has joined us here in South Florida, and here's our buddy Chris Fowler. Chris? Orange Bowl in Miami, college football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. Number 19, Pittsburgh, number one, defending national champs, winners of 31 in a row, Miami. A little steam in the South Florida air, temperature in the upper 70s, the humidity above three quarters of saturation cloudy they're taking the showers out of the forecast but it's Miami you never know the coaches Walt Harris beat Miami in his first year at Pittsburgh he has returned the program to pride and respect and it's one of the proudest in the history of the sport on the other side Larry Coker 21 and 0 <laughs> you can't bad. start any better not bad. nobody in the yeah. modern era has started any better you see the only person ahead is Walter Camp they got an All-American team named after that guy, gosh. The standings in the Big East after last night's West Virginia win in Blacksburg, and congratulations to Rich Rodriguez for the job he's done. Virginia Tech can finish no better than fourth. The top three will be Pittsburgh, Miami, West Virginia in some order. If the Panthers win tonight, they claim at least a share of the Big East title. Miami still has games at Syracuse and here against Virginia Tech on the schedule. Miami won the toss, deferred the option to the second half. So Todd Seavers is going to kick off to one of the guys who is jacked about being here. Tory Cox went to Northwestern High School in Miami. He's a very good kickoff returner, and he has been yapping nonstop for 10 days about coming back home to play. Miami goes for 32 in a row. Pittsburgh tries to make a name for itself. Off we go on college football Thursday night. It will be Cox from the seven. With an opening, Tory Cox. Oh, big hit at the 26 by Andre Johnson, the starting wide receiver. If not, he could have gone all the way. Rod Rutherford's the quarterback. From role player to starter, he's learned how to play the quarterback spot. Look at his size. He's big and a good runner. Behind him, Brandon Myrie, the Alabama transfer at a buck 61 at Virginia Tech. Polite does a lot of different things. Slade, 40 receptions, a senior. Fitzgerald, a freshman, eight touchdowns, a special player. Chris Wilson, the tight end, can get up the seam and stretch the field. Opening drive of the night starts from the 26. And they will run with Myrie, who breaks into the secondary. Very close to a first down, a pickup of nine. Good job done by an offensive line. Each player on that O-line has started at least 20 games. See the guy on the left, Pacini, the sophomore? He's the best of the bunch. Lee, here's the Miami defensive line. This defense as good as it gets. Miami rotates eight defensive linemen. L L M National Football League scouts tell us that seven of them are National Football League prospects. He's seven out of eight. Not bad. Jerome McDougal there, he's the best. Senior out of Pompano Beach has four sacks this year. You'll hear Green and Walters, Joseph and Williams as the night goes on. 
Good first down run, and Rutherford throws on second and one into tight coverage, incomplete. It was nearly intercepted by Jonathan Vilma, the linebacker. Speaking of Vilma, he's the top tackler from Carl Gables, along with D.J. Williams, who was the high school player of the year as a running back out in California. Howard Clark, the senior, will be spelled by Roger McIntosh. Kirk, these guys are young. Yeah, they're young. This is the big question at the beginning of the year. Miami lost their top five defensive backs, four new starters, and all they are is leading the nation in pass defense. And Kelly Jennings is their best corner. Him against freshman Larry Fitzgerald from Pittsburgh will be a fun matchup to watch tonight. They ran on second and one and can run for it now. If they so choose on third and a long yard, they stack the power eye of receivers to the left and do it out of the gun. Rutherford quick strike, short throw, but picked up. And a first down for Marcus Furman. The backup running back picked up seven on the play. He's from Pennsylvania in Connellsville, his sixth reception of the year. Interesting way to start the ball game. You get a nice run all the way to make it second down and one. All of a sudden, you come out and pass twice. I think that's to keep the Miami defense off guard, don't you? And Kirk? talking to Walt Harris on the field before the game, he said, you know, the important thing is not only running the football, but to have balance, trying to keep this Miami defense as aggressive as they are back on their heels. And that's what you just saw there in those uh, those three plays. First and ten for the 42. Rutherford running a little option. It's really designed for him just to keep it. He was pulled by the neck by Jerome McDougal. Big play by the senior out of Pompano Beach, a loss of a yard. One thing you don't want to do with Miami is run to the outside because of the speed that Miami has. They have a lot of speed that can get lateral, and if you try to go east and west, it's tough to do. McDougal is fighting under the inside, and watch the play he's able to make and get off it. The athletic ability to fight off a block and still run down a quarterback. If you're going to run on Miami, you've got to try to run the football between the tackles. And some people have been successful doing that this year against the Kings. After the loss of one blitz, not picked up, D.J. Williams, sack. Second of the year for the kid from California. D.J. Williams showed you why he was such an all-star running back. Watch the speed at the top of the picture. There's a busted assignment there by number 77, Brian Anderson, who should have blocked out, and that allowed D.J. Williams to come Ready out forward. to number one. Ooh. Great to see the speed there at D.J. Williams and the aggression, something he has not shown all the times this year. Third and 20, they need to get into Miami territory for a first down. They'll just run it with Myrie up the middle of the 41. He got eight of it back, but after picking up one first down and a good kickoff return, the Miami defense gets the job done up front. Andy Lee, best punter in the Big East, going to kick it away. And it's very, very important that he get this ball off fast because Miami likes to come after the punt early. But the key thing Andy Lee must do is get net yardage. Keep that ball away from the receiver. Roscoe Parrish, a Santana Moss-like exciting receiver kick returner, away to the zone 15. High snap. Nice job of pulling it down and getting it out of there. Short kick, 37 yards. Returnable. Oh! Turn for touchdown this year, seven in the previous two years. Todd Seavers on to add the extra point. It is a 78 yard return from the sophomore from Gulliver Prep right here in Miami. So you're waiting for all those Heisman hopefuls to get on the field. They'll put points on the board in special teams. Number one, Miami leads seven nothing early. John Taylor's 78-yard punt return. Miami strikes first. 
This is why everybody talks about Miami being so dangerous. Offense hasn't even been on the field. They set this up perfectly. All the momentum. Pittsburgh's excited. Look at the change in direction there. Pittsburgh now has three guys. But look at the convoy of blockers for Miami. And Sean Taylor at safety sets that up perfectly to take that all the way into the end zone as the blockers lead him in. One of the reasons why that kick was a line drive was because of the snap. We're going to show that to you in a second. That's right. Taylor gives them a 7-0 lead. Taylor, who uh, scored three touchdowns in the state title game. So you know he has offensive skills. Over 40 touchdowns in his high school career with a big one there. Unreturnable for Torrey Cox. Pittsburgh will have it at the 20, and Lee will show you the genesis of the problem. Number 36, Andy Lee is the best punter in the Big East, but he gets a high snap. When he gets a high snap, watch him rush this. When he rushes the kick right now because he's worried about it being blocked, he kicks a line drive. You notice you can see it right there. No distance, no height on that ball at all. And that's what made it go, Kirk, was because of the line drive. Yeah, right. The pit guys could not get down there. That was caused by a high snap by the center. I also love the call, though. Just the opening punt, all the hype, the buildup of the game. Pittsburgh's got to get them pinned back deep. You knew they're going to come down with a lot of speed. Slowed him down with that reversal there with uh, Taylor taking it into the end zone. From the 20, Rutherford. Good give to Myrie. First down out to the 31 yard line. So Brandon Myrie, the Alabama transfer, has come in here and become the runner for the Panthers this year. All right, now you're, now you're Pittsburgh. You're playing the best team in college football. You know when they show up to play, which they have, we can see they've shown up to play. <laughs> you, you've got to hang in there. Miami dominates teams early they've only allowed 17 first quarter points all year hang in there stick to the game plan and don't get discombobulated now mentally and don't lose your composure as a player first and ten another Myrie run up the middle there's another six seven yards so they are comfortably running between the tackles I'm immediately reminded of what Randy Shannon the 36 year old defensive coordinator for the Canes told us yesterday when somebody in this Miami defense makes a play, it opens the floodgates for this Miami team, and play after play seems to happen, and they got a play right away when they blitzed D.J. Williams, and he made the sack. It was funny. He said, you know, it's the strangest personality of any team I've ever been around. Randy Shannon there, the defensive coordinator, he said, it's one of these teams, like you said, Mike, one guy makes a play, and now everybody wants to make a play. We'll see if that works after D.J. Williams' big sack. Second and a couple, and they'll throw on second and short for the second time. Incomplete. Looking for Fitzgerald. Well covered. Taylor and Maurice Sykes, the two safeties, for home and waiting. Now, I know Walt Harris wants to come out smoking, and I agree with him. He's got to play to win. But let me tell you something, Walt. If I were you, I'd try to keep the football. If you got second and short the next time, please run it. Because if you don't make it, it'd be third and short, then make a first down, and then start doing some other things. Because if you allow Miami to jump on you 14 night, nothing. It's all over, sweetheart, in this stadium. Walt has said this year, turnover ratio and time of possession were the emphasis points. And they've succeeded all year doing that. We need to keep the clock going with the possession of the ball. Done here on a first down toss to Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald, a true freshman out of Minneapolis, his 47th catch on the year. Eight of them have gone for touchdowns. Uh, the chance to be a very special player. Good size at 6'3", 210. Good size, loves to go up into the air. Walt Harris, we talked about it in the pregame show. Walt Harris has been around some great receivers, feels that Larry Fitzgerald has as good a ball skills of a young receiver as anybody that he's been around. You just wonder, as a true freshman, playing the defending national champions, how will he mentally hold up in a game like this? So far, he looks good. It's the true option to Myrie, try to wiggle away and did a decent job to gain a couple of yards. Was contained by Maurice Sykes junior from here in Miami Miami plays so much man coverage on the outside Walt Harris trying to get the ball to that alley unfortunately with the safety speed it's it is really tough to get the ball in the perimeter against the Canes well you mentioned it before but it's obvious from up here they've had four plays inside the tackle really good two yep. to the outside can't really out bad there. that's not good nope, can't get out there not many people have run option well against Miami on second down Rutherford what looked to be a design run by Jonathan Vilma. Ah. 
the junior from the Canes campus city in Coral Gables made the stop. Larry Coker told me that Jonathan Vilma is the Ed Reed of this year. He's the defensive leader, and that tackle remind me. That tackle remind me of one of the crushed the guy last year oh against Nebraska. Remember that? Watch him get out of. Ooh, puts Detect his head me. there, squats his butt down there, explodes through. Ooh, that's a clinic tackle right there by Wilma. You know, talking some NFL personnel, they think with all the talk about the defense alignment, Jonathan Vilma may have the best career of all of them in the NFL. Third and long seven. Four in the pattern. Rutherford in trouble and sacked by William Joseph. His third. And they'll kick it away again. So Pittsburgh's run 13 plays. Miami has two sacks. Panthers have picked up a first down each time, but then stopped. And now we'll watch Andy Lee's punt. After the last one was taken back to the house. High snap again. This time a little patient and better hang time. Stay away, says Roscoe Parrish. As it gets a Pittsburgh bounce down to the 17 yard line. The punt covers 47 yards, and the senior Ken Dorsey, 35 and 1 in his career, takes the field when you come back. Miami set to run its first play of the night, already up 7 0. These aerial views, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. With us, the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, continuing a 77 year tradition as the aerial ambassador and icon of the 102 year old company. So they are fans of number 11 with good reason. Ken Dorsey's 35 and 1 in his fabulous career. The senior from California gets him going from the 17. Little pitch out to Willis McGahee. Half dozen yards on first down. You know, Dorsey doesn't have the gaudy stats, but he is the unquestioned, unquestioned key to this team's success. You ask the players, they'll tell you 11's our guy. Behind him, McGahee, nearing 1,200 yards in nine games. The fullbacks don't touch it much. Well, why not with all these other guys? Beard is 22 grabs. Johnson, the game-changing six-foot-three receiver. And Kellen Winslow leads the team with 37 catches. The son of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Second and fourth row, there is Winslow. First down at the 31. Pulled down by Tyrone Gilliard. The strong safety is going to be busy. Here are the guys up front from Miami. Have two Canadians in Sherko Haji Razuli and Brett Romberg who anchor it. The guards and tackles are all 6'5 or 6'6. They are big. Kirk, pit defensive line, they're one of the top 10 in the country. One of the top 10. This defense is very aggressive. Claude Harriet is from this area. He we talked to him last night, number 90. He's fired up. He's a young player. As far as game experience, and he needs to have a big one tonight, pressuring Ken Dorsey. From the 31, here comes McGahee. He'll push it forward for four to the 35. Vince Crochunis, the sophomore nose tackle, made the play. Here's the back seven for the Panthers. Gerald Hayes, senior from New Jersey, one of the best middle backers in the country. Don't forget about uh, Beinecke and Moore. They can play as well. Lee, good secondary. Torrey Cox is from Miami. He leads a Pittsburgh secondary. He has 13 picks. He's a former tailback that he can also run. He averages over 24 yards per punt return. He's a game breaker on both sides of the ball. We'll set this defense eighth in the nation against uh, yards gained, 11th in points scored against them. So they are pretty good. They are tested by McGahee and company. Shoulder down to the 46. Give them 11. First down, Miami. And this is just an absolute clinic out of the gate. What makes it so tough to defend these guys? You've just seen. I mean, not only do they have balance, they distribute the football to everybody. Willis McGahee, who averages over seven yards per touch. Seven yards per touch. How about the vision there? Ball was supposed to bounce to the outside. He saw a hole backside and took it there. And this offensive line, as a young group, really starting to come on to help McGahee out. Dorsey will throw on first down. Incomplete ethnic Sands coming inside. Ball thrown in a good spot, but Sands could not hold on. Uh, Lee mentioned it in the Sports Center comment earlier. He is the orchestrator, and you yes. see an example of the orchestration of this offense. Perfect run pass balance. The reason I say that, after watching the Tennessee game, he looked like a, uh, a famous maestro sitting there and saying, okay, McGay, it's your turn. Winslow, your turn. Okay, Johnson, your turn. Now I'll take one. Wonderful play selection and great execution by Dorsey. Second and ten. That's Kevin Beard in motion. And on play action, Dorsey steps up. Intercepted! Beinecke, the linebacker, 
down the sideline and knocked down at the 35 yard line. That's the ninth interception of the year thrown by Dorsey and probably the fourth one that would be his fault. Five of them this year were not his fault but Paul Rhodes defense comes up with a turnover like they have all year. Now Ken Dorsey did not see Beinecke and we're sitting here talking about Miami and how good the balance is and how great Ken Dorsey is and he is a fantastic player this offense is phenomenal but Pittsburgh's here to play some football tonight their defense has to give their offense the football in a position to make plays look he doesn't see 15 slide off of Winslow the tight end right into that zone area that was a heck of a play by Beinecke great shot guys you can see Beinecke just hanging out out of his vision Put it in the belly of Myrie, and he pounds forward for 5-2, the 30-yard line. Well, in the last eight games, Pitt has forced 22 turnovers, and Walt Harris's recipe for success this year, a plus 13 in the turnover margin, top 12 in the country compared to the last two years when they've been in the bottom 15%. Huge difference. He's come up with 31 takeaways, and, and it's going to give your offense more and more opportunities, especially, look at this, you have to plus 30 now. Really gives uh, Rod Rutherford in this group some confidence. And from the 30, Myrie gets to the outside. Good run to the 23-yard line. Well, this kid was at Alabama, and then with the coaching change and Dennis Franchoni coming in, it was more of a spread offense. He felt he would not fit in, although things were fine with Coach Fran. That's right. He told us for sure that Coach Franchoni and him got along very well. It was just a matter of he wanted to find another place to play, and he also went closer to home to Cincinnati, Ohio. Right? That's not far from Pittsburgh. Yeah, and he fits into this system well because he's such a physical runner. You can see they want to mix in the run with the pass, just like Miami does, and to have a back back there who can break tackles and get it up in there is important. First down run with Myrie bounced out of a would-be tackle to keep it alive for a couple of yards. You saw earlier this evening his big run uh, that Chris Fowler showed you against Virginia Tech that kind of changed the map a little bit in the Big East. And since then, Virginia Tech has lost to Syracuse and last night on ESPN2 to West Virginia. Thus, the Panthers have put themselves in position to be the team with the best shot at knocking off Miami's Big East title walk. And Pitt has been doing a lot of that draw from the shotgun. I wouldn't be surprised if Old Rutherford didn't keep a bootleg sooner or later. It looks open from up here. Second and eight. Passing formation. Five in the pattern. Rutherford eluded the rush of Jonathan Vilma. Has a lot of room inside the five. First and goal, Panthers. There you go, 17 wow. yards. And Rod Rutherford has the Panthers in position to tie. Remember we were talking about Walt Harris talking to us last night. He said he told Rutherford, go back, look around. If you don't see anybody wide open, just run. The guy 6'3", 220, can fly. Kirk, why not? That was a great effort that time by Rutherford. And, and when you're Miami and you play as much man under coverage as they do, if you miss one tackle, an athletic quarterback has room to run off field, and that's what happened. Jonathan Vilma missed a tackle on the sack. All the underneath coverage was manned up, and it freed him up with a big space. Always have the fade to Fitzgerald on the left side for the touchdown. Spectacular catch. Touchdown. Man alive, is he good with the ball in the air. Nobody better. Talked about this all year long, this kid, and I think in the Virginia Tech game, gained some national respect. As a Remember, this is a true freshman. Watch him go up in the air wow. and adjust to the ball. He, he does this as well as anybody. He was a ball boy for the Minnesota Vikings for years. And doesn't he remind you of old number 80 of the Minnesota Vikings up there and the way he can go up and make a catch? Chris Carter, who he befriended in those days and has been very helpful to his development as a receiver. David Abdul, the freshman, adds the extra point. So after the interception by Beinecke, five plays, 34 yards, a lot of Myrie, a key run by Rutherford, and Fitzgerald with the touchdown. Walt Harris's team took a shot from Miami, but responded all even at seven. The Twin Cities ties the game at seven here in the Orange Bowl. We talked about Kelly Jenkins, who has a right arm, problem right hand, watch this. Larry Coker told us that he was concerned on the goal line that he might try to protect it to him. Now watch, he keeps his right hand way down he and did. tries to knock it with the left hand. If he was well, I think Kirk, I think he went up with both hands.
but he's protecting the right hand. Uh, he did protect it. I don't care if he had four hands there. He's not stopping Larry Fitzgerald from going up and making that play. You know what? But he might have made a little, bit, a little, better better a little better effort. A little better effort. A little bit better effort. Right. But num <laughs> number one is not going to be stopped by uh, Kelly Jennings, who is, uh, how tall is Kelly? He's six, six foot. Five, eleven, six feet. Yeah. It was the first touchdown after the Beinecke interception. First TD allowed at home to a Big East team since Boston College 23 quarters ago. So Miami's defense in the conference has been outstanding. This will be a Jason Gathers return from the five. The backup tailback makes a couple of moves. Slowed by his own man, but undeterred to the 37. Brought down by Tyrone Gillier, the backup defensive back. Kickoff return was 31 there. Great weekend. Here's our ESPN2 college football Saturday lineup. Maryland takes on Virginia, and Eli Manning and Ole Miss still need another one to get to the postseason. LSU was embarrassed by Alabama in Baton Rouge. Will they take it out on Ole Miss? College football Saturday, ESPN2. That double dip at night. And one week from tonight, we'll be celebrating Thanksgiving in Oxford for Mississippi State and Ole Miss. The Egg Bowl, Turkey Stop. Dorsey and the Canes back on the field. Good field position to start with. Willis McGahee keeps his feet turning for about five to the 42 yard line. Go back to the beginning of this game where Miami took the opening punt, took it down. They're at home, 7 0. Number one team in the country, your pit. Kind of unchartered waters here playing the number one team. You don't know how they're going to respond. They get a turnover of their own. And not only that, for Walt Harris's offense to capitalize. You're looking at a score right now that's 7-7. Seven to seven. Most teams get down to Miami 7 to nothing early like that, and it's goodbye. That was huge for Pitt and that defense to come up with that turnover. Roscoe Parrish in motion. Give his inside to McGahee. He'll have the first down across the yellow line at the 48. So six more yards. For Willis. Again, he can really move. He's the guy, he's a, I can't believe it. He's 220 pounds. He runs like about a 185 pounder. Watch it cut off his right foot, keeps his balance, and moves forward. I want to add one more point to Kirk's point, though. Remember, we saw Tennessee drive the ball down him against Miami, and they couldn't get it in. Yep. You've got to give Pitt a lot of credit yeah. for scoring a touchdown against that good Miami red zone defense. I think that was the key to that situation. The Tennessee game was the last one for Miami. Yep. Both teams have had a dozen days off. Dorsey play action with McGahee. Big hit. As Winslow came over the middle, Torrey Cox was waiting for him. That is the Miami kid who's amped up tonight. Torrey came off of the receiver, Andre Johnson. And this is a play that you've seen Miami in the last three or four games go to a lot. It's play action going back to Kellen Winslow, kind of dragging from the backside. How many times have you seen Winslow underneath yeah. coverage making big catches? And that time, Torrey Cox, well prepared, came off of Andre Johnson to make the big hit there on Kellen Winslow. Second and 10 to throw again. Harriet was almost pulled down as he was rushing. That pass incomplete through the hands of Kevin Beard. Claude Harriet was getting a good rush from Dorsey's left-hand side, the defense's right. Well, this is Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator for Pitt, said the only tendency that Miami ever gives you with their play calling is third and ten. You get into third and eight, third and nine, there's Paul Rhodes. You've got a chance because now you know that they're probably going to throw the football. So all the other downs and situations, they can run or throw. But here, they know that they can, they're going to throw and they can try to put some pressure on it rushes four. Miami puts five in the pattern. Covered downfield and nowhere to go. So Andre Johnson's catch goes not very far at all. Thanks to Tory Cox, his uh, Miami buddy. And they get the Canes off the field after just one first down. Tell you what. Pittsburgh defense last two series is I think I think gained some invaluable confidence. Freddie Capshaw has had three punch blocks this year. I'd go after him, Mike. He got it out of there quick that time with Sean Robinson waiting and watching it bounce. And it will be down inside the one. It's where the ball is, not the player. And that time the tightrope job was done by Antro Roll. He went over the goal line, but came back in before the ball crossed. Thus, it is a 99-yard field.
four pick. Well, tomorrow night, the NBA season continues. NBA Friday doubleheader. At eight, Allen Iverson and the Sixers to Toronto to take on the Raptors. Then Elton Brand and the Clippers take on Jawan Howard and the Nuggets. NBA Friday, our doubleheader tomorrow night on ESPN. The Nuggets continuing to struggle. But there's a lot of good young talent. The Mavericks ha have lost the game. Andrew. Mavericks have not lost, Lee. Maybe we can add you to NBA Friday. <laughs> 99 yards to go. Try to run it out of there with the fullback, Lusaka Polite. You got a couple of yards. There you watch the NFL, the Oakland Raiders, their home crowd, that end zone is, what do they call that? that the, the black hole. Black hole. Yeah. The Miami Hurricanes fans. You know, you, you open, as soon as they open up the gate, it's the student section, and they are nasty. You know, even in warm-ups, they're yelling obscenities and getting after the opposing team. Pittsburgh, everything they did, whether it's missing a field goal or dropping a punt in warm-ups, they were giving them the business, and right now, they're right in front of that section. Second and nine, pump and throw for Fitzgerald. Are you kidding me? You can't be serious. <laughs> First down. Man, is he good. Are you, are you kidding me? Watch this kid. This is a true freshman in the Orange Bowl. Real time here. Oh, my gosh. I'm telling you, him hanging up watching the Vikings with Chris Carter, that's Chris Carter. Yeah. I'm afraid to tell you, young as he is, that's a better Chris Carter. Uh, Chris that Carter's kid. in the building there. I know, but this guy might be a lot better Woo. than anybody around. Woo. That is... <laughs> I'm just appreciative of watching that. Yeah. That is amazing. I think Petiti, the left tackle, move. That'll back him up five. First flag of the night. And Tom Tomzik, our Big East official, will check it all out for us. One more time. One more. I just have to see it one more time on an ISO. He's going to go up, and I want to watch. I want to watch him not only go up and high point the ball because he does it as well as anybody. Goes up. Look at the angle of the body. But watch after the catch. This is one of the classiest kids that you're going to see as a young freshman after success. He flips the ball to the ref. Back to the huddle. Class act. He's done it before. Yeah. And as a freshman. <laughs> First and fifteen. Rutherford looking left side of the field. Try a deep shot with Roosevelt Bynes, who got tangled up. We allow Funzo Marshall in coverage, but no foul on Marshall. For a second and long coming up. This Pittsburgh team has lost two games this year. One was to Notre Dame by eight. Rutherford did not perform very well in the red zone in that game. The one earlier was on ESPN to Texas A&M. They lost by two at home to the Aggies. And as we've seen now, the Aggies have some talent. They put together the big win over Oklahoma. In that game, Pitt was poor offensively in the first half, very good in the second half, a missed extra point, ended up costing them a chance to go to overtime. Second and 15, drop play, right into the teeth of the coming Canes. On Andrew Williams. First one out of the pile, but the play, that's the guy who made it, DJ Williams. He was at the bottom, made the first stick. But Andrew Williams is number 99, him and Vince Wolf, those guys are on a second unit. Yeah. Those are the guys that we talked about <laughs> that the National Football League think that they might have seven out of the top eight defensive linemen NFL prospects. That's wonderful. If you, know, if you include the two linebackers, think of them, <laughs> just the front seven. You got eight or nine guys up there who are going to be in the NFL. Third and 19. From the seven. Some time, some space. No space. That's Williams again. DJ's all over the field. And Vince Wolfork. Fourth down. And they'll get to see a punt. The good thing for Pittsburgh, the quarter's going to end, so they don't have to punch snap back here in this hostile end. There's a break for the Panthers as Will Flip ends for quarter number two. Well, oh, Miami's only run 11 plays, one of them an interception. Pittsburgh's run 23 plays and a couple of spectacular catches by the freshman Larry Fitzgerald. One ended a drive and a touchdown. All tied at seven from the Orange Bowl. Welcome to 
Miami. Quarter number two, Pittsburgh and the Canes all tied at seven. Never very disappointing when the Thursday night schedule comes out and we see November in South Florida. <laughs> Does not hurt. Not bad. All right, the snaps have been high the first couple of times. Let's see how Andy Lee handles this one. Good return chance of the Canes as well with Roscoe Parrish waiting around midfield. Got this one away. He's a good kicker. Nice hang time, Lee. Better. Parrish the 46, made one man miss. Reverses his field. Flag down as Parrish storms to the 40 yard line. Probably coming back. The punt was 48, the return 15. Sort out the hanky laying at the Canes 43. Uh, give Miami a longer field for Ken Dorsey. Well, well, guys, I mean, you've been asked, I mean, daily, hourly, yeah, about uh, the Heisman and Ken Dorsey. What's funny is that there's be almost a sense of a backlash against Ken Dorsey for some reason, that he shouldn't be the Heisman winner because the system that he has and everything else. Now, you guys have seen Ken Dorsey, and you've seen a bunch of the other players. Why do you think there's a negative backlash towards Ken Dorsey? Well, Let me I get think my chair. Just a second. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. All right. Good. Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, I think it has to do with, with the numbers. I think yeah, that uh, if you look at the individual numbers, compare them to some of the other Heisman Trophy quarterbacks over the years, maybe people say, well, he's not worthy. But the most important number that I think most people agree with are the wins and the losses. 35 and one career starter. But Gahey's carry, and he is sucked back, lost about a yard or so. So Harriet and the defense get in there, and some people say that because of the presence of Willis McGahee, nearly 1,200 yards in nine games, that that's going to take away votes from Ken Dorsey. Yeah, but you could say that about Banks with Russell. You can say that about every guy. But the big thing about Dorsey, he wins the games, and he wins them in the fourth quarter, or he wins them on third down. He's got one of the most amazing third down stats in America. I think he's missed, had one interception on third down. Is it, Mike? In his career. In his career. Regular season career. Hello. Is it tight enough up here for you, folks? Yeah, this. <laughs> it's an old building, you know, brother. <laughs> Ah. McGee writes. It's good up here. It carries to the 36. Ugh. I don't think they envisioned a three man booth in uh, 1935. It's, it's a good thing I'm not 6'4. Yeah, good thing I'm. See, it's a good night to be short, isn't it? It's a good night to be short. It might to be short. And this building is uh, in Little Havana here in Miami, and only the Canes now call it home. Of course, the Dolphins here for so many years. So many great games and great teams. I played high school football here. Oh, oh. Many, many years ago, oh, I played the Orange Bowl. Yeah, the Miami Jackson team. We used to play on Saturday night because the Canes played on Friday. They weren't as big as high school football. <laughs> right. Third and seven again yep. here. Harry an inside rush being held off. Dorsey's pass is incomplete. Looking for Winslow. The coverage was there once again. So the Panthers, thanks to Lewis Moore's defense, unable to find open receivers. We're going to continue to say it. Stay in the game early. Gain some confidence on the road playing the number one team in the country. And you can make it a ball game. That's what Pitt's been able to do here. Still early, but they've been able to kind of talk themselves into believing that they can play with the Miami Hurricanes in the early going in this game. Punt of Freddie Capshaw. Sean Robinson awaits. Billy Gaines has returned punts most of the year for Pitt. Gaines is back home with a foot injury. Robinson, the senior, a lot of hang time, got it at the 15. And returns at 9 to the 24. Well done by Glenn Sharp, not just with the tackle, but also staying out of the two-yard bubble after the 50-yard punt with no return. You know, I've been told there's a football game in Columbus this week. Is that right? <laughs> Michigan, Ohio State at noon Eastern across the country on ABC. And then four regional games. Many of you will see Michigan State against Larry Johnson at Penn State. Missouri's great quarterback against Kansas State. Florida State, NC State. Bobby Bowden against Chuck Amato. And USC, UCLA. Rivalry weekend on ABC. Of course, it begins with college game day on ESPN at 10.30 a.m. Live and in color from Columbus, Ohio. From the 35, Rutherford. Gives to Myrie, lost a couple of yards. Very good play by Orland Harris, the redshirt freshman. Here's Jerry Punch with a guest. And Chris Carter down here on the sidelines with us. Chris, uh, Larry Fitzgerald, phenomenal. Just, just the way you taught him when he was a ball ball for the Vikings. Well, I'm going to tell you something. He's seen a lot. I'm really proud of him. Um, not only myself, but he's been watching Randy Moss play. Um, we used to take care of him up there. He used to wear our shoes and drive our cars and wash our cars, work for the Vikings as a ball boy. We're proud of him. His parents have done a good job, though. 
His signature is that stretch catch, and we'll talk about that in just a moment after the play. Mike? All right, Doc. Second and ten. Officially no gain. That's Fitzgerald. One in motion. Rutherford is flush. He's looking for Fitzgerald. Oh. Threw it behind him, and it's incomplete. Good coverage by Kelly Jennings. Right back to Doc. Chris, his signature is a stretch catch, the over-the-shoulder catch. Might be the most difficult to make. How tough is that for a young receiver to learn? And obviously, he's got it down. It really is. He's doing something that a lot of kids don't want to do. He always practices the difficult catch. If you see him in warm-up, he warms up a lot like a pro receiver. He tries to make the unbelievable catch, try to set him apart from the other people. But, you know, he's got a lot of talent. He's seen a lot. He tries to emulate everything that Randy and myself were doing there in Minnesota, and he's doing a few of those things tonight. And, and speaking of a game, there's a one coming up in Columbus on Saturday. The, the Buckeyes are playing somebody, right? Oh, a big, big game. The, the only game. The big show. Taking the Buckeyes? Ohio State and the Buckeyes. They're going to take it. All right, Chris. <laughs> All right. Back upstairs. Rutherford on the run. Keeps it alive and almost got the first down until it was tangled by Sean Taylor. And they'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. Chris Carter here with the Miami Dolphins was in the hospital for about a week with a kidney ailment. The good news for Chris is that he's feeling a lot better and hopefully he'll be back to practice in the next uh, week or so and back on the field soon for Miami. Came out of retirement this year. And you notice how none of these Ohio State guys will say the M word, by the way. <laughs> what are you talking about? They can't sleep at night when they think of the helmet. Andy Lee's fourth punch of the night coming up. Ethnic Sands awaits. See if the Canes try to heat up the punter. Good job of protection. Bad job of kicking. Yeah. It'll give Miami a nice field position. I jinxed him. You did. Talk <laughs> about him in a pregame. You were talking him. about him all week. Oh, man. The more you talk about him, You're killing those guys. Tough reason. Tough reason. Yeah. 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 College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. Number one Miami looking for 32 wins in a row. They've only had the ball for five and a half minutes here in the first 20 minutes of this game. A Sean Taylor punt return of 78 yards put the Canes up 7 nothing. Pittsburgh took an interception thrown by Ken Dorsey and turned it into a Larry Fitzgerald touchdown grab. All tied at 7. Dorsey on the move for first down. And throws. Broken up. Intended for the very last second for Roscoe Parrish. They wanted the interception. But they ruled Sean Robinson was out of bounds when he caught it. Cool hustle by Robinson. Yeah, yeah, Kenny, a little bit late on this throw. It's the second time when he's rolled out to the right that he's been late. He's waiting for his receiver to turn and then throwing. He did, look at the, look at the effort there. What a play by Robinson to get that ball. Not only batted away, but somehow caught the football out of bounds. But Kenny's got to get rid of that ball quicker to give his receiver a chance to have some room to make the play. Four numbers early for Dorsey. Beard in motion. Give McGahee left side. Pulled down as he stretches out to the 48-yard line. Tyrone Gilliard in there on the tackle. Willis McGahee now over 1,200 yards. It's a sophomore who didn't think it was going to be his job. When you think about the end of last year, you had Clinton Portis, who surprised some by going early, and Frank Gore, who when he got in was fabulous. But Gore gets injured. Portis goes pro. It's McGahee's job, and he has thrived. 6'1", about 225 pounds. You know, he's had nine plays already this year, 30 yards or more, wow. seven yards per touch. <laughs> the guy's had just a, a magical year. Third and about six. Nobody's open downfield. Dorsey now throws for Johnson and got rid of it. So Dorsey looks like he's struggling, but guys, don't you think Pitt's doing a good job in the back seven? Exactly. I was watching his back seven that time, and instead of playing man for man, they started off with a look of man for man, then they dropped into their zones. And Miami does a lot of crossing patterns, and nobody was open. That's why Dorsey had a run. Yeah, the crossing patterns kill man coverage this time. And it, the, the last two or three times they've been in third and long, Pittsburgh's elected to sit back and play zone with seven guys dropping, and it's worked. Pat Sean with good hang time. A lot of room for Sean Robinson, though. From the 17, he'll get out to the 20, and that's about it. Well covered by the Canes. Uh, Jarrell Weaver, one of the first down there. Well, Ken Dorsey opened two of two. He's one of eight since, including an interception. Getting a little frustrated. Here, who would like to remind you to take all of life's journeys on the wings of Goodyear. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Dr. Jerry Punch, Trev Alberts, Mark Mann, our buddy Chris Fowler with us here as well. 
Uh, college football Thursday night studio crew joining us for this big one number one the reigning national champs Miami all square with Pittsburgh the Panthers have taken a punch and responded from the 20. There's Rutherford keeping as Lee alluded to earlier might happen and he picks up three to the 23 yard line. We mentioned Miami's won 31 in a row tying the seventh longest win streak in college football history. A couple other teams at 31 including the Pittsburgh Panthers in the Pop Warner era. Glenn Pop Warner was the coach of Pitt from 1915 to 1923. And when he took over, the Panthers won 31 in a row. The 1915 and 16 teams, as well as the 1918 crew, were national champions. So Pittsburgh and Miami, rare to say, two teams that have won 31 in a row in the history of the sport. Second and seven design run for Rutherford. They can't go outside, short side, on these guys. Third down coming up after the Jonathan film attack. You know our buddy Bino Cooks back in Pittsburgh watching the game and smiling that we made a Pop Warner reference in the 1915 pit football. Oh yeah. Yep. Congratulations to Bino, by the way. The media room at the new Peterson Center, the basketball building, the University of Pittsburgh on campus, named after Bino. Great move. Bino was a legend at Pittsburgh. Yep. He's a legend with us now. You see him every Saturday night on that scoreboard. There's Fitzgerald, right? Yeah, trying to get the ball here. We've been quiet here in the last couple series. Rutherford third down. Some time. No more time. He only gets so long against the Canes. William Joseph and Jerome McDougal get Miami's third sack of the night. This goes back to, you know, you talk about a quarterback. Get rid of the football quickly because Miami gets after it. But this is good coverage. Antrell rolls undersized, but staying with Fitzgerald. That's the thing that Miami's secondary has done a very good job of. It's not just about the front and the linebackers the secondary with four new starters this year remember they lead the nation in passing efficiency for a reason they cover very well Miami's defense getting the job done the last two series Andy Lee now to kick for the fifth time tonight snaps are still high had a rush that one because someone was breaking free it was Taylor I think this will be 39 yards and another good job of field position for Miami they start this one at the 41. So if Ken Dorsey can shake the offense loose, Miami's going to have a chance to take advantage of winning the field position battle. Uh, that was partially blocked by Sean Taylor, who had the punt return for touchdown earlier. So that affected the punt. My, uh, Pittsburgh lucky that Miami's only starting from their 41. McGahee cut back. McGahee first down to the 40-yard line. 19 yards for Willis. The reason why this punt was partially blocked is, first of all, the center snap is high, Again. which makes the timing off. Second, Sean Taylor goes for a perfect position, not where the kicker is, but where he's going to kick the ball. That is an extremely well-coached play by the special teams of Miami. Shows the versatility of Sean Taylor. He's a big defensive back. He's already returned one for a, a touchdown, and now he's peeking through there and coming up with a, a tip on the block. 11th carry of the night for McGahee gets him out to the 36 yard line. Hasn't been a fully healthy year for Willis. Here's Jerry with more on that. You know, Mike Willis McGahee has been bothered with a turf toe for most of the year and a very, very painful turf toe on his right foot. And every time he tried to push off, it was very uncomfortable. They tried putting orthotics, things inside his shoes, and nothing worked until a couple of weeks ago. This is the shoe he was wearing. It's basically a kicker shoe. They're called light and tight. They're very light shoes and very tight across the front. He is now wearing, as of the past two weeks, this offensive lineman's shoe. Much heavier, but a much wider toe box, and he's very comfortable. Guess what? No more pain in that right big toe. They faked to him after giving it to him a few times. Tried to hit Quadrin Hill, the fullback. But Harriet rushed it a little bit. They're trying to get everything underneath coverage right now. And I know that, that Pittsburgh's playing a lot of zone, but the receivers that Miami has, you'd like to see maybe get the ball downfield vertically. Try to stretch Pittsburgh a little bit. And then that can open up some things underneath. But right now, too much horizontal routes for Miami and not enough vertical, not enough downfield throws. Third and seven coming up, and the Canes uh, have not converted a third down tonight in their prior three tries. Pittsburgh defense has been doing a good job in coverage this time. They try to bring some heat. They picked it up, but nowhere to go for Beard. Shante Spencer 
who is like a starter at the quarterback spot, and Beard is shaken up on the play. Looks like uh, landed awkwardly as uh, Spencer brought him down. It will be a punting situation, but the concern now is for the junior out of Plantation, Florida, who has 22 catches on this season. Speed guy get any sort of a lower leg injury and that takes away his effectiveness and let's see if we can see what happened to him. Very important part of this offense that they're checking his right knee. Grabbed right for it so they will uh, look at Kevin There's this Miami offense has uh, now three times in a row gotten the ball in good field position and been unable to uh, stick it to pick no yeah. points to show for it and Spencer also got hurt in that little maybe they were knee to knee could be we'll have to see what what Doc has and hopefully they're both okay but in the last you mentioned it Mike the last three possessions for Ken Dorsey in Miami three and out and they've had great field position Paul Rhodes the defensive coordinator for Pittsburgh mixing up the looks we've talked about a lot of the zone coverage that last time on third and long he mixed it up put every all his coverage up to the line of scrimmage and played man that's how you slow down Miami you can't sit in one defense you've got to mix it up try to keep Ken Dorsey in that offense guessing a little bit and keep him out of rhythm well, you you were talking about trying to get a vertical a vertical stretch and I could agree with you couldn't agree with you more but the problem is they're not letting them do that Dorsey's four completions are seven yards seven yards three yards minus one that's what they're making Dorsey throw underneath him in front of him nice defensive plan right, it didn't look good as uh, Beard came off with no power on they're gonna try a field goal with Seavers who has made a 53 yarder against the Gators this year this one will be a 54 yard field goal but uh, Miami first will take a timeout maybe reconsider it we'll step out as well 653 left second quarter we're all tied Kevin Beard and a lot of discomfort, a lot of uh, conciliatory uh, wishes from his Miami teammates as they continue to look at his knee. After the timeout, they still bring out Seavers for a 54-yard field goal attempt. Hooking left, long enough but no good. A thunderous leg, as you guys saw in person at Tennessee. But he misses it to the left, and Pittsburgh once again holds Miami pointless. Big strong leg. You know, he reminds me of Andy Hall. Oh, yeah. who was at Wisconsin and kicking for the New York Jets has just a powerful leg. He's been been able to make kicks uh, over 60 yards in practice. Here he's able to go and you know he did plenty of distance. He just hooked it and ended up um, missing it off to the left there. 6'3, 214 pounds. He's a good looking athlete. Uh, they look at Beard. Well, we'll get an update from Doc momentarily. You meant John Hall there, by yes. the Wisconsin right. kicker John. the Jets. From the 37, yeah. first down run. Good run by Myrie. Got it across the 40. Pick up about four. Let's go down to Doc. Jerry? Guys, just a moment ago, you saw a very emotional Kevin Beard, and he's being held and holding hands by his teammates. Tears streaming down his face, says Dr. John Uribe examined him a moment ago. Take a look at that right knee. They'll take him in the locker room. Uh, he is done for the night. He'll probably have an MRI tomorrow morning to examine the knee. The, the concern is, is the ACL and MCL in that right knee. They put him on clutches now. Done playing for tonight, but uh, a very emotional time for a gallant young man. Uh, sure is, Jerry. Myrie, first down to the 50-yard line and into Miami territory because uh, the loss of Beard is not just the loss of a starting receiver. It's also the loss of the heart of the receiving core. Kevin Beard has, has been a great leader. He's a junior, big part of the offense last year. And one of those guys that in the locker room, you can see the players, you know, since he's been on the sidelines, they all have come over. I mean, everybody has come over. There's Andre Johnson, one of the great receivers here. Everybody come over, putting their arm around him. And that is a, that is a tough blow emotionally and spiritually for this Miami team. The midfield, the Panthers with the first down. Rutherford's throw could not get it to Marcus Furman, the sophomore out of Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Did you guys see that last graphic go up on the screen? Pittsburgh has 24 more yards. Miami only has 72 yards in 24 minutes. That tells you how good the Panther D. Thanks, guys. That, that's amazing. 
Oh, it's, it's been a, a number of things that Pittsburgh's been able to do. That and the field position has really favored Miami throughout most of this first half. Remember, Pittsburgh came in here with one of the highest ranked defenses in the nation. It isn't like they're playing the sisters of the poor now. Second and ten. Another throw for Rod Rutherford. A little late for Roosevelt Fines, or maybe early. Fines was jostled in coverage as he was coming over. It'll be third down. Easy to sit up here, but Walt Harris has got to get Rod Rutherford to get the football to Larry Fitzgerald. He was the guy who was making the plays. Look at the time of possession. Big, big advantage. Double for Pittsburgh. But get the football to Larry Fitzgerald, especially on third down and long. Even if you're getting the pressure, put it up in the air. Give the guy a chance to try to make a play. He's in a slot now at the top of the screen. Three-man line. Showing pressure off the corner. Here it comes. Rutherford has time to throw. It's high. It's incomplete. Bynes had to climb the ladder to pull it down. This has been the pattern for Pittsburgh. Pick up one first down and then stall. Rutherford's missed the last five. But by virtue of the long missed field goal with good special teams execution, Pittsburgh can make it a long field for right. Miami. At least they're punting from midfield instead of deep in their own territory. The busy Andy Lee hoping for a good snap. There we go. Well executed there. It took a Miami bounce and was down by the man who snapped it, Jonathan Sitter, at the 21 yard line. 29 yards on the kick. At ESPN2 lineup Saturday, we have Maryland, a surging team in the ACC here in the second half of the season. Gets another good team, Virginia. Ole Miss tries to stop the bleeding against LSU. We'll take you to Charlottesville and Baton Rouge for college football Saturday on ESPN2. This is not any sight that we'll see in Oxford next week oh. or in Baton Rouge on Saturday night. Famed South Beach in Miami. Is it nice over there? It's South, nice. never been there, Lee. Yeah, he'd been there a few times. A long Scoot. time ago. <laughs> From the 20. <laughs> McGee protects it, but slow developing. And this Pittsburgh defense is surging to the ball. Uh, markers down as well. And they'll be first and 20 from their own 10. Larry Coco's quarterback hit his first two, but since then has done nothing. And certainly is not doing anything to quell the critics that have swelled over the last month about why should Ken Dorsey win the Heisman. He's struggling here right now. Last three series, three and out. They haven't been able to get any kind of rhythm at all. The penalties hurt Miami really early in the season, and they used to have two officials at all the practices. So Larry Coker told me he did something very different against Tennessee to focus him. He has four officials at every Tuesday and Wednesday practice Ooh. at Miami, and it's really helped them focus on lack of penalties now. Most penalized team of the Big East. First and 20. Dorsey's throw is dropped. That's Quadrin Hill, the freshman fullback who turned up field without the ball. Again, a, a, a throw that's wide to the boundary, two yards upfield. Even if Hill makes the catch, he's going to be tackled for about a two-yard gain. You know, it's it's uh, going to be something we'll have to watch in the second half, the adjustments, see if Larry Coker and Rob Trzynski, the offensive coordinator, try to find ways to get the ball thrown over the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. And again, downfield, whether they're playing zone or man, they've got the playmakers to get the ball downfield. Paul Rhodes' defense doing some kind of job here tonight. Second and 20. Nothing for McGahee. Look, look at this. Yep. Dorsey got rid of it quick as well. Now, now you're, you're on the, the right hash. You're going to try to, it's, it's second and long. You're trying to get anything just to give yourself a chance on third down. But you're throwing a flare pass out into the boundary against a Pittsburgh defense that has some speed. If the guy makes the catch here, if anything, he's going to lose a few yards. Paul Rhodes almost went to Auburn in the offseason, their defensive coordinator at Pittsburgh. And Rob Chudzinski is now trying to match wits with uh, that man right there, Rhodes, who's really turned this Pittsburgh defense into something to talk about. They need to get all the way out to the 31. Four receivers in the pattern. Then the dump down to McGahee. He's got nowhere to go. Look at these white-shirted Panthers. He lost yards. Rarely do you see a Miami screen lose yards, and the 
Kane faithful are a little antsy right now. And the folks who came up from Western PA are kind of jacked. The reason that screen was stopped because at 51, Gerald Hayes was spying on McGee. We talked about it in the pregame show. Watch him come right out of your picture right there and miss him, but forces him to move. He was spying him all over the place because McGee is wonderful at the screen. Capshaw there it may is. have gotten it partially blocked. It bounces right to Robinson. He had to pick it up, and he's down at the 30-yard line. So Pittsburgh's going to have great field position. A 29-yard punt, seven on the return. And it looks like the Panthers, Shante Spencer, was the one to touch it. That's the fourth punt block by Cabshaw this year. Four. He just came right off the edge. And he, he didn't get all of it, but he got enough of it to give Pittsburgh. He's just going to come off right off the edge here. Roll lets him slide by, and he gets that hand on the football. Gives Pittsburgh the ball at the 30 yard line. They capitalized last time they had the football like this deep into Miami territory. Let's see what they can do here. Three receivers, one back. Brandon Myrie couldn't climb through. Jonathan Vilma, the middle backer, made the tackle, gain of just a yard. We mentioned what happened to Pittsburgh in terms of their two losses this year to AM and Notre Dame. After that, they had what you could arguably say were the two biggest wins. For Walt Harris, an overtime home win over Boston College, and then that seven-point win at Virginia Tech we talked about. Then they kind of were sleepwalking a little bit against a Temple team that does things that frustrate Pitt. They beat Temple 29-22. That's how they arrive here tonight at eight and two, undefeated in the Big East. A win tonight, they share the conference crown. Five in the pattern, a second and nine. Rutherford throw, incomplete. Had no windows to throw that one through. Intended for Marcus Furman again with Maurice Sykes covering. Miami doesn't get real fancy. They play the two-man look. They're going to play two safeties deep to prevent you from getting downfield. They're going to man up everything underneath. It makes it tough. He had time to throw there, and there you have a safety kind of robbing, sitting in the middle of the field. That's great coverage by the Canes. And that's one thing Rutherford's got to be very, very careful. This Miami is one of those teams, if you turn it over and they get an interception, oh. boom. They're like piranhas when they see blood. Rutherford quarterback draw for the first down. Turned the corner and got it. And delivered the blow at the 13 on Jonathan Vilma. A first down pickup by Rutherford. He used the speed. Bynes helped the block. A pickup of 15. A cane is shaken up on the play. And I think it's Cornelius Green, their backup defensive end. Key block here, Mike. You said it. Roosevelt Bynes off to the left of the screen here. Bang! Takes down the defensive back and gives <laughs> Rutherford. Ooh, and that, by the way, that's that's Jonathan Vilma. Watch now. Watch the block right there to the outside. Gives him enough room right there to get the first down, and then lowers the shoulder on Jonathan Vilma. Wow. And didn't well, back up for a second. I know he's got the size, but, but I just, wait, I, just I wanted to make a point so everybody could understand this. Vilma is 6'2", 220, and that poor little old quarterback is 6'3", 220. I don't care. Jonathan he's bigger, Vilma. and he was running full speed. He ran right over the guy. Why not? Yeah, all right. Jonathan Vilma's one of the biggest hit, biggest hitters in college football, and he took the short end there. <laughs> you saw Cornelius Green, Kilgore Junior College, hometown Houston, Texas, the player that they're looking at on the field. So Miami's lost a couple of uh, their players. Green is one of the seven D linemen that Leah talked about. Vilma took that shot from the big man Rutherford. And remember, this was third down and long. He got the key block, keeps the drive alive. And I, hey, Vilma's coming pretty full, full steam ahead himself. Yeah, he dropped that shoulder though nice, didn't he? Rutherford's had runs of 16, 7, and 15 tonight. It's exactly what Walt Harris told him. You see the coverage, it's there. Right. Don't throw the ball away. Whoop. Run. And he's run 16, 7, and 15. Remember, Lee, after the 16-yard run last time, it got them to first and goal at the five, and they went to the fade route to Fitzgerald for the touchdown. Once they get inside the red zone, the chances of them trying to get the ball to that fade to Fitzgerald are very, very good. Fitzgerald's gonna be down here now, bottom of your screen. Polite in as the setback. Rutherford running again. He's at the 10. Inside the 5. Down 
to the three yard line. 11 yards. First down, and another Miami player is slow to get up. This time it's Wilfork. The, the O line is very, very experienced. Chad Reed, Dan LaCart, Brian Anderson, the inside, they all get into the man's face. I like the way LaCart stayed with his man there and gives Rutherford a chance to run the football. Another player from Miami injured, Maurice Sykes, was part of that uh, shot. Wilfork ran off on his own power. They're looking at Sykes and they're going to wait for the injury to measure to see if there was a first down for Rutherford. But one thing we're seeing is Pittsburgh is making the hits. They are taking the tempo of this game to the number one team in the nation. Last time we watched Miami play in person, Lee and I were at the Tennessee game, and the Tennessee players were the team mm -hmm. that were Going falling down. down because of how physical the game was. And so far in this first half, you, I mean, you kind of sense that not only momentum, but you just look across on the other side, and you look at the, the enthusiasm, yep. the team beginning to believe, and on this side, all of a sudden Miami's starting to look around and wonder about a few things it'll be first and goal here's Jerry with an injury update you guys numbers mounting for that man right there Larry Coker Cornelius Green the backup left end taken directly to the locker room by John Uribe the noted orthopedic surgeon who takes care of the, the Hurricanes and the Miami Dolphins are going to examine that left knee but uh, examination on the field uh, very tentative so the numbers uh, could be very thin tonight if uh, injuries keep mounting up at the art locker room with John Uribe getting ready to examine Big Cornelius all right Doc First and goal, Fitzgerald, bottom of the screen. Caught a touchdown in this situation earlier. Looking that way, throwing that way. Fitzgerald knocked it away because it looked like Alfonso Marshall was going to get up and intercept it. Marshall is six foot one, and he can give a little more size on that corner. Mark Stoops, the defensive back coach for the Miami Hurricanes, made the adjustment here. He knew that their chances are they're going to go to the fade. And that time, Marshall's in great position, but the quarterback's got to get more air on the ball to give the taller receiver, Fitzgerald, a chance to go up and make one of those acrobat catches. Rutherford's missed his last seven. They move Fitzgerald now in the slot at the top of the screen. Nowhere to go for Marie. William Joseph made the tackle. Third down coming up. Pittsburgh's right in the middle of the field. A field goal would give them the lead, so you have to be very smart here. When you have a running quarterback, you can get him on the move and do lots of things. You no, know, we love the, the first guess. I don't care if the entire stadium knows this. You go I'm right going to, it? to Larry Fitzgerald, and I'm putting enough air underneath it to give him a chance. And I know the quarterback can run, but Fitzgerald is so tough one-on-one. -on -one. I would bootleg the quarterback and give him a Use chance. Use speed. Absolutely. Run or pass. Get out of that sail. Third and goal. He's looking to slant. Is caught for the touchdown by Roosevelt Bynes. All the attention to Fitzgerald. They find Bynes on the slant. And the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale puts Pittsburgh on top. All started with the partially blocked punt. That put Pittsburgh in good field position, and unlike Miami, when it's had good field position, they cash in with Bynes, who verbally committed to Minnesota and said it was too cold. <laughs> Came a little bit south to Pittsburgh. The extra point added by David Abdul. It's warmer in Pittsburgh than Minnesota, yes. Okay, yeah, maybe true. An interesting stat. Pitt was one of only two teams, Virginia Tech, to lead Miami last year. Only two teams, and they're doing it again. Rutherford, two five-yard touchdown passes in the first quarter. Fitzgerald, the second quarter binds. Number one, down seven. Hey, but the folks in Pittsburgh who said, we believe in ourselves, they have frustrated Ken Dorsey, limited him to just 13 yards passing. The Miami offense is just 69 yards. And Pittsburgh's taking advantage of the opportunities. One a turnover, one a partially blocked punt to take a 14-7 lead here in the second quarter. Jason gathers, gathers the kickoff from the eight. Room to his left, and he brings it out to the 32-yard line. I'll be interested to see if now Larry Coker, go on, Kirk, take it now, talk about that point next. Uh, watch the head of the quarterback. 
and how he looks to the left just enough to freeze the safety Maurice Sykes to give him just enough of a window to hit the slant right behind him that was the key there Rutherford's eyes looking to the left and then coming back and throwing the binds my point is I want to see if Larry Coker allows Dorsey to do the two-minute drill he's very good at it they got 219 to go and they've got two timeouts I'd say go two-minute drill and try to get something without Kevin Beard the wide receiver is injured here's McGahee left side Tries to probe the other way and breaks free. Lewis McGahee is gone. Touchdown. Just like that, they do it again. Hang on. Marker down at the 20-yard line. It's down at the Pittsburgh 20-yard line. Nine yards the run for McGahee. Will it stand? Dead ball, personal foul. <clears throat> Against the offense. Scores good. So Miami will have a chance to tie the game as Willis McGahee was bottled up as, and popped the cork. As Tom Archer, our producer, says, I was right. They used the two-minute offense, but it was number two instead of the two-minute offense. <laughs> what right. a run by McGahee. Wonderful blocking. And I'm telling you right now, that play is one of those Heisman highlights right, because yep. they bring a team from behind. Yep. Big, big moment. The timing of it is so oh, important. Oh, oh. This is an offense that three of the last four series yeah. was three and out. They get down by seven, and then the big run there right before the half. Flag to be administered on the ensuing kickoff. Extra point to try to tie the game from Seavers. I, I, thought, I thought the rule had changed that you administer these flags on the point try. If anybody knows, my friend, you do. Uh, Pull the book don't, don't, don't out. Here's the book. Me. Pull don't, it don't out. Here's the book. Get it? He That's why it's kind of travels everywhere with it. Here's the book. PGA book. He's got this book. NBA. You got the NBA book too? Uh, it's, it's under here actually. Okay. Denver tomorrow. Later. Yeah. There there you go. Go. The 15 yard penalty will be ministered on the try. I was going to say that. You were? Why no, didn't you? I, here it is. I didn't know it. <laughs> this, is, this is the Mike Tirico book. Mike Tirico right book. Says, Bye. Nice light nice reading. Nice. Yeah. Nice interpretation. Break it down. Like a coach. You're uh, looking at McGahee over there after that long run. His 18th rushing touchdown in the season. That is a Miami Hurricanes record. Edrin James, now the great Indianapolis Colt back, held that mark. So the extra point becomes a 35-yard field goal. The length never a problem for Seavers. Leaking right, but got it in there. And it's good. He also passed over to Sanderson for second all-time of the single-season rushing list with this 69-yard run. Funny. Miami had 69 total yards for the first 27 and a half minutes. Willis changed that. New game at 14. Respond to tie the game at 14 against the Pittsburgh Panthers, who have had the statistical better of play by far until that play by McGahee. 69 yard run. I thought Lee made a great point. Heisman type moments are oh. those. The ones that are on national TV that are in a big spot and, and change struggling. the momentum. Team struggling. Yep. Absolutely. You made a great point. He made more yards in one play than Miami had almost the whole first half. And the beauty of the play was it looked like he was going to be stopped. Yes. He's kind of pulled the string on him and brought it back. Torrey Cox runs under it from the eight. Looking for a seam. He is sent to the turf at the 30. A marker's down after the hit by Darrell McClover. Mm. Pushing the back on the Panthers. They'll have a long field. Down on the field in that corner of the end zone, Chris Fowler and company. What's coming up at halftime? Right here in the hot corner, Mike, the northeast corner. Trev Alberts and Mark May alongside the Pontiac halftime report. We'll take a look at the other pieces in the puzzle of the national championship race as folks from Iowa and Washington State and Notre Dame and Georgia looking on and rooting hard for Pittsburgh here tonight. We'll talk about that, plus the Heisman coming up at halftime. Okay, bud. See you in a little bit. Great to have the guys here with us tonight. Now, I'm not 
I'm first guessing. All right. Always kill the hair. Yeah, what you say? Well, exactly. Well, take it easy now. It's 14-14 against the number one team in the nation. They're like piranhas. If you give them a little bit of blood right here, they're going to suck it out of you and get it in score and put you to sleep. Especially in this stadium. They, they've kind of been asleep since that big punt return. As soon as they get a play like this, now this wakes the defense up. This wakes the stadium up. You're right. Get out of here Be with careful. the score at 14-14. Be careful. Yes, make, them, great. make them use their two timeouts. Four receivers, one back. That lone back's Myrie, and here comes Brandon, running hard to the right. Got it out to the 14. Will Miami stop the clock? The Canes still have two timeouts remaining. And they're going to wait till second and third down to use those. Fifty-four year old Larry Coker, 23 years as an assistant at Ohio State and Tulsa with John Cooper. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, he coached Barry Sanders is on Jimmy Johnson's staff. And of course, here with Butch Davis for the turnaround that led to the title last year. Rutherford took it all the way down to the end and used the timeout, so it's not as damaging because he let the clock completely run down for taking that timeout. So a buck 17 before this second down. Honestly, we've been here for a couple days. We talked about this all week. We thought it would be a big build-up game. We know Miami was a big favorite. Did you think Pittsburgh could hang physically on the field? Because that's what they've done in the first half. Well, we thought that because of their defense, they could, and they've done a better job. They've stuffed the running game and made Dorsey try to be with the pass game one-dimensional. That's the way to beat Miami. Well, they've mixed up things on defense, but uh, they've also taken advantage of some opportunities, getting the ball with turnovers and the big punt returns. So I, 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 I'm not necessarily shocked because you knew Pittsburgh had great team, a great team on both sides of the ball. What you're surprised at is everybody talks about Miami brings their A game. Who can play with them in reality? in the country and the way the game started for Pittsburgh to rebound and stay in this is a little bit surprising and I didn't think that Miami would be in a situation where they wouldn't come out in their a game mode because they've had 10 days off and now it's become crystal clear they've had nine days or 12 days excuse me to know it's us and the Buckeyes we do it they do it we see them remember now it's still 14 14 and it's against a pretty good football team in Pittsburgh now Pittsburgh's only lost two ball games Texas A&M and Notre Dame so they're in a, go a good ball game with a good football team. They're just not like they're playing right. somebody they should be beating really bad. Right, but let's also not forget there's a whole half to go, and Miami's one of those teams where it's 14-14. to -14. You go away, you go get a, a pop, you come back, and it's 35-14. One of the things about it, though, a lot of the people that are voting are going to go to sleep at halftime. No, no, they're, they're, not not lead. they're not like you. Well, tonight. second and four the <laughs> from the 14. AARP goes to sleep. Fiery, big first down for the Panthers at the 25-yard mm -hmm. line. Clock will stop here at a buck 11. Now, Lee, do you still want to just Absolutely get out of Dodge? Sweeter. Absolutely. Walt Harris, 14-14, go in at halftime against the number one team in the nation. Yes, Mike, answer your question. Wind that clock on the Panthers are not in the two-minute offensive set. Mm -hmm. Taking their time. If you would have told Walt Harris before the game, <laughs> after the game, the way it started, it'd be 14-14 at halftime. And he's a any smart coach. Yeah. He wants to get out of there. Yeah. It's 2 10 Myrie. It's a second hand of the ball. Gets down to the 30. Why don't we see Jerry Punch on the sideline real quick, Doc? Guys, it has been a very costly first half for the Miami Hurricanes. Both Kevin Beard, the junior flanker, and Cornelius Green, the senior backup left end, are not only done for the night, they're done for the year. The same injury involving the right knee ligaments. They'll have MRIs, and probably John Uribe will consider surgery in the next few days. Tough night for the Hurricanes here in the first half. Yeah. Horrible to hear that, Jerry. Mm. Two guys were a big part of that championship yeah. team a year ago as well. Should be the final play of the half. It's a first down for Myrie at the 36-yard line. 12 seconds left of timeout. Well, forget about trying to score right now. To me, it's just, you know what? You got, well, you got two first downs. In, in e the way the half potentially could have ended, it's the ball deep in your own territory. That kid, he's fired up now. They go into the halftime now with a little bit of momentum with two first downs. That's a great point because it, it kind of dulls what Miami yeah. did. Yeah. You think about it, guys. Miami made two spectacular plays. The 78-yard punt return, the 69-yard McGahee run. That's it. That's it for the Kings. One interesting thing also that Miami staff will be tested now on adjustments because Pittsburgh's doing a great job of stopping what they do best. Here's Doc with Larry Coker. 
Coach, hard to believe. We rarely see your offense sputter like we've seen in the first half. What do you do in the second half to try to get on track? Well, we really struggle. We really haven't gotten in sync. We haven't made plays. And we just got to we just got to settle down and get, uh, give him a good package. And, and we just have to make some plays in the second half. First half really hurts you. Injuries to Beard and Green, and it doesn't look good. No, it doesn't look good. And obviously, you, you don't like any injuries. But, uh, but again, I think, you know, we, we've got some good replacements. We'll be fine there. We just have to make sure and, and uh, play our game in the second half. Thanks for your time, Coach. Good luck. Jerry, Mike. Miami gets the ball to start the second half at the break, 14-14. Certainly worth the trip down for Chris Fowler and company, the CF. Oh, Michael, thank you, Trev. All even at 14, as the guys were alluding to during halftime. Certainly a surprise, and now 30 minutes for Miami to decide if they want to keep control of their national championship dreams. Offensively, I try to get the ball to Andre Johnson's hand. We have him call as enough. Right. Winslow and Moore hooks instead of crossings, and I would not roll at that door. He doesn't look good rolling the ball. You called it a couple of times. He didn't look good. Well, they're, they're not getting the ball downfield. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing that I think has hurt their offense. They're going to get the ball here to see what they can do. And now that they've been able to go back to McGahee, that's the key. Their identity, they need to establish the run and then get the football downfield. Yeah. Andre Johnson. Just remember, when they trailed Florida State by two scores in the fourth quarter, they played with incredible poise. Well, that's the thing they're mm -hmm. going to bring. It's a tie game, but they've been around this block, this team, this season. And to add to the Orange Bowl luster, a little South Florida evening shower to dampen the ball on the turf as well. Rutherford back on the field. And he had some key runs in that first half on both touchdown drives as well. Jason gathers Jarrett Payton, the son of sweetness, await the kick, and gathers takes from the six. Tries to break through that first line of would-be tacklers and strung out to the 27-yard line. We covered on special teams tackle made by Tez Morris. Here's Jerry Punch. Guys at halftime in the Pittsburgh locker room, and there was teaching, intensity, and optimism. The teaching part, that guy right there, Walt Harris, sitting with Rod Rutherford and J.D. Brookhart sitting with Fitzgerald and the receivers talking about getting off the line of scrimmage and getting the offense on track. The intensity, Paul Rhodes had that defense fired up, ready to come out and play for 30 final minutes. The optimism, they said, you know what? We didn't play very well in the first half, and we are tied up here with the number one team in the nation. A lot of optimism here in the Panther locker room. Good stuff, Doc. Thanks. From 29, here's Dorsey. Hasn't been sharp tonight. Sharp there to Roscoe Parrish. First down Miami at the 47. If him 18. Add the 18 yards of that to the first half stats, and you'll see that Miami's still struggling offensively. Uh, when you look at the plays that Pittsburgh had, that reconciles with the time of possession. Two to one advantage for Pittsburgh. They've won the time of possession battle in each of their eight wins this season. Two things stand out there. 0 for 5 on third down for Miami in the time of possession. This, this Pittsburgh defense has not been on the field very long tonight. That's just the uh, second completion over seven yards in this game. McGahee, big touchdown earlier. Through the secondary to the 39-yard line. And those of you around the country who have said that this is the guy who should be the Heisman pick from Miami the first half, back your point. What I like is the offensive line looks like they come out and finally start to do some business. The right tackle, Burn Perry, got into the face of the defensive tackle, Don Stevens, and just kind of stayed with him. Miami's going to win this football game if they win it up front offensively and on the line defensively. Mercy play action. Ethnic Sands is deep. Winslow underneath That's at the 29-yard line. And I'll be right at the first down line. A pickup of almost 10 with Torrey Cox making the tackle. See, so when they're able to start running the football and make the defense respect that aspect, now all of a sudden, good call here by Rob Trudzinski right away to go to the play action. Good ball fake, good action by Dorsey. And Winslow, once he gets outside of you, I don't care who you are, it's tough to be able to not only catch up with him, but bring him down. A nice open field tackle there by Torrey Cox. I think it's important for Miami to score in this drive because it's starting to rain a little bit more. And in Miami, it really can come down at the end of the game. Second and one. They'll throw for it. Pink ball for the six. Andre Johnson. There he goes. Touchdown, Miami. Vintage Canes. Quick strike, quick drive, touchdown.
Miami makes a living like that. Mm -hmm. The average time of possession on their touchdown drives, a minute 53, and they bettered it on that drive. Seavers true on the try. That possession a minute 42. Dorsey led plays that went 19, 13, and 9 yards and put them in position for this. The 30-yard strike, first touch of the night for the junior from Miami, Andre Johnson. Touchdown pass, 22 for Miami's all-time touchdown thrower. The reign of number one is the defending champ. A little less in doubt as they take a seven-point lead. Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes providing the pictures tonight. Each year, the Goodyear Blimps visit over 100 communities and participate in dozens of telecasts at major sporting events. <laughs> you need a phone coach down yeah. there for the Canes. <laughs> that'd be a great, that's that commercial. Can you, yeah. it, commercial, can you hear me now? <laughs> good. Can you hear me now? And is good. Order a pizza or what? A good is the bottom line to can you hear me now there, yeah. right? Dorsey outstanding on that drive. Oh. The Canes march down the field. And now Pittsburgh asked to respond again. Miami native Tory Cox from the one. Finding some space. And still going. Tory Cox to the 39 yard line. 38 yards on the return. The kicker, Seavers, was in there early and he got taken out of the play. Somebody threw a shoe in the process. Out comes Rod Rutherford, 6'3, 220 quarterback for the Panthers. Well, they did it in the first half. Pittsburgh gave up a touchdown early, hung in there, responded, went into halftime, tied at 14. Once again, character and moxie, this Pittsburgh team is going to be challenged after Miami just went right down the field and put up another touchdown early to start this half. Free play, offsides on the Canes. Rutherford keeping. They'll take the flag. It'll be first and five from the 45. Miami's fourth flag of the night, two on Pittsburgh. Rod Rutherford faced pressure coming into this season. Mm -hmm. There was a very highly recruited, one of the most touted prep quarterbacks in the nation, Tyler Palco out of Western Allegheny High School. Offside. Defense, five-yard penalty, first down. That in Western PA, factory for great quarterbacks, terrific football, and Walt Harris is known as a great quarterback coach, and Palco is a huge coup. So he gets there, he's a freshman, he's learned the offense. Rod Rutherford's been there a couple of years, kind of backing up, playing in short yardage situation. The fans didn't have confidence in Rod Rutherford. Rod Rutherford didn't have enough confidence in Rod Rutherford. Struggled early in that Ohio game with three INTs, and people said, hey, let's get Paul in there, get the freshman in. Run Luke Polite, the fullback, who gets it out near midfield. That'll be just shy, I believe, of a first down. So anyway, Rutherford really hurt it from the fans in the student session, especially. Think about the pressure. Here you got a freshman hot shot behind you. You haven't proven a thing. Well, he took the team over in the huddle the second half of Texas A&M, and from that point forward, Rod Rutherford became the quarterback at Pittsburgh. Chad Reed, the center, who's, who's been in this lineup for a long time, said, you know, last year when he was in the huddle, it didn't seem like he was, it was his huddle. He seemed like he was coming in, it was somebody else's huddle. From that Texas A&M game on, this has been Rod Rutherford's team. Another fullback run, trying to pick up the first down, and across midfield, that should be it for Polite. And Reed said the thing that I think won over the team, because there was still some doubt wh whether the freshman was going to come on or whether Rutherford could take it. He said, you know, the whole stadium's booing him. The student section's on him. They're calling for the freshman. And he walked into the huddle and said, guys, it's, this is my team. You know, we're going we're gonna to try to get this done, and I'm going to be the guy that's going to do it. And I think everybody all of a sudden looked around in that huddle and said, you know what? This is our guy. And they started to believe in him. And the, the more he's played, the more he's improved with more reps. Flag helped them pick up the first down from midfield. Rutherford, option pitch Myrie, look out. Slipped as he was trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. And that's some of the rain impact that we'll see. One more thing I want to follow through there. The patience of Walt Harris, the head football coach, also helped that situation. He never panicked. He never looked at uh, Palco as, a, as the savior. He kept his faith in Rutherford. 
and that turned it around. Well, Rod Rutherford's a tough kid. He grew up on the north side, the housing project in Pittsburgh, Northview Heights. He saw people mugged and beaten and killed while he was waiting for a school bus. Wow. So to hear the student section booing and calling for Tyler Palco, yeah. that's nothing. Said, I, I've seen much worse than this. Yeah. Second and 11 quarterback draw. Rutherford will make it third and about five yards as he was tackled by Jamal Green. If you're just joining us, Cornelius Green, unrelated, is out for Miami. The senior backup defensive lineman injured his knee out for the season. Same true with Kevin Beard, one of their starting receivers. So Miami's uh, incurred a couple of serious injuries in the first half of this game. Walt Harris is one of the better quarterback coaches in the country, and you're right. Mm -hmm. How he's handled him has really helped him. Rain not muting the noise at the Orange Bowl. Rutherford stays in and throws. It's in the air. It's caught. Incredible. <laughs> Lamar Slade came down with it. The brother of NFL star Chris Slade, a 10 yard chain mover. First down, Panthers. Have you ever met that Chris Slade? Yes. He's a monster. I met him at the airport and he said, if I didn't say good things about his brother Lamar, he's going to come and get me. Lamar looked like a great player there. There. <laughs> there it is. We're Throw, even. Goes into traffic. <laughs> Antrell Roll gets a hand on it. And usually, when a ball oh. goes up like that with a Miami defense, yeah. that's an interception yep. going the other way. Vilma had it, but Slade came in there to take it away. Rutherford forced to uh, take time out here. The Panthers will be down to two. Lee, were you connecting through Atlanta at that point? Or I, are you kidding me? What is today? I don't know where I am, much less connected through an airport. Well, you always connect through Atlanta or Cincinnati, wherever you're going. Of I get as many as those Delta miles as I can. <laughs> Glad to have you on board for college football Thursday night from the Orange Bowl in Miami. The top team in the, in the nation, the Canes, leading 21-14. Pittsburgh driving first and 10 for Miami 35 Rutherford runs behind Brian Anderson the guard and gets four yards to about the 31. We've talked so many times about how Miami is one of the few teams in the country that can defend the run and defend it well in most cases by just using their front four and their linebackers. It allows them to keep their safeties deep. Almost every snap, you'll see two safeties deep on the hash. See if they do it here. I know Pittsburgh's coming out in a little bit of a different formation. So you're gonna keep, they're gonna always keep a couple safeties deep to prevent that big play with the pass game. They run it, Myrie can't go anywhere. That's what you're talking about with Jonathan Vilma. And there's a couple of backers joining the four up front. That's enough to stop the run. It's just rare to see that so many teams get the eighth, ninth guy down. And Miami does that occasionally. They did it a little bit there, bringing the leading the safety up. But most often, you'll see Sykes stay back deep. Taylor will stay back deep. And that's to, to try to take advantage of having great athletic ability up front and at the same time preventing the deep ball from getting behind him. Hey, but is that why people have been able to run on him a little bit because yeah. they're not numbered in the box? That's exactly right. Third and seven, first down away yeah, to the 25. There. Yep, they backed up there. Here's Rutherford taking off, trying to take advantage of that space. He got the first down across the 25 into the 20-yard line. So you back them all up, and when you need seven, you can get it. Yeah, third and long, the safeties are thinking pass, they're getting deep, and one of the dangers of playing an athletic quarterback is if he can get through the pass rush, and get through a blitz if it comes. Look how it just opens up. It's like the Red Sea parting. The safeties come up late by the time they get up to try to make a tackle. Rutherford's a good enough athlete to make a guy miss. Even with four sacks tonight, Rutherford has run for 49 yards. It tells you uh, how good he's been in those good spots. Into the red zone go the Panthers. Pressure off the corner. Myrie runs right into the teeth of the Miami defense again. We said that a few times, but that has been the case throughout. Maurice Sykes walked up from the safety spot. But if I'm not mistaken, Pittsburgh has got into the red zone twice and scored twice. Yes, and have. before this ball game, they were almost horrendous. And the third down, I mean, in the red zone, 
They were not good at scoring, but against Miami, who prides itself. There's the, look at this. That's not good at all. Touchdown percentage. Not score. good at all. But what happens is they wanted it more than Miami when they got into the red zone twice, and they got it. They're stopping Myrie's run. Negative three yards on three carries this quarter. Second and 11. Rutherford taken off again. Lost the football. Miami squeezed it and recovers. Maurice Sykes came up with it. The first Panther turnover of the night happens in a very tough spot. You, know, you, you hate to see this for a, uh, a quarterback who's been having such a good night running the football, but he got oh, popped. Miami yeah. came up, hit the, the helmet right on the football to jar it loose, and that's one of the dangers. When you're a quarterback, you're athletic, you're going to take some chances, especially against a Miami defense that loves to hit you to try to jar it loose. But your point was well taken. The Miami defender hit his helmet right on the right. ball. No excuse for that except great defensive play. McGahey takes it out to the 14. So Pittsburgh had a 10 play drive that went for nothing. Got in the red zone, took some time off the clock. But you don't get many scoring opportunities against that Miami defense. Now all of a sudden we're seeing a chess game. Rob Chudzinski, the offensive coordinator for the Miami Hurricanes, went in at halftime, came out, really got things going. After Paul Rhodes dominated the first half. Now the adjustments continue. Let's see who can win this battle. Okay, he protecting the ball as he gains only a yard or so. A third and a couple coming up. You mentioned uh, Rob Chudzinski, such young coordinators, mm. both in their 30s, with Randy Shannon on defense. And there's Rob, who was a tight end who played with uh, Steve Walsh and Craig Erickson, starting tight end on the uh, 89 team has three championship rings from 87 89 and 2001 and which ring did he tell us yesterday's most proud of it's great he said as a coach yeah he said you know as a coach you appreciate it maybe a little bit more because of all the hours yeah. and all the work that goes into it behind closed doors third and two look at McGee he protected down here inside his own 20 and pound forward for the first down you think of a back who's averaging all these yards per carry, six and a half lead. You think the guy's looking at the home run. Rainy night, two hands on the ball. Just get me those three yards. Well coached. Now watch him. Two hands on the ball. Remember we talked about that. We used to say two things. Inside, two minutes, two hands on the ball. Any kind of rain, two hands on the ball. Don't worry about the extra yards. Just protect the football. Good coaching by Miami staff. Little things like that make champions. And you win 35-1 and one that way. On Soldingers, they're running back. Coach, play pass now. First down. Dorsey looking for someone to break free. Winslow underneath. 17 first down yards. Winslow makes the catch underneath because what happened on that side when the play started left nobody over there in white. What's happening is Pittsburgh's defense is starting to cave in on the play action and on the run. And those plays that they were going to earlier by trying to get the ball outside to Winslow are now all of a sudden working yeah. because the defense is flowing to stop McGahee. And also, Dorsey's a little sharper now. He's four for four this quarter. Nice rhythmic passes. Not that rollout stuff they started in the first half. I didn't like that. Out of the gun. Inside handoff with McGahee. Sees Claude Harriet. Tried to spin away, but will be taken down for a seven-yard loss. Jake Holthouse, the backup nose tackle, ended up finishing it off, but Harriet made the play, stopping initially. That Claude Harriet is quite a story. He came from Bell Glade, Florida, and you guys don't know much about that, but that high school program down there is as good as anybody in the country. When he was in high school, they were 27 and 2 for the years that he plays. He's an outstanding player. He was not recruited from, from Miami. Remember he told us he really wanted to play this game. He said he has been looking forward to this, this game since last year. Dorsey's throw to Winslow underneath. Gets back some of the yardage lost. You'll have third and about oh, seven, let's say, for Miami coming up here. Those of you might just be joining us. Our ESPN game track, number one Miami, trailing a good part of the night. Dorsey coming through. He's hit all of his passes, all five in his third quarter. A 30-yard touchdown to Andre Johnson on the opening drive. Pittsburgh marched it down the field some 50 yards. Then Rod Rutherford had it knocked out of his hands. And the fumble recovery got it back for Miami. That's what's happened here in the third quarter. The game started with a punt return for Miami. Pittsburgh scored two touchdowns, taking advantage of 
Miami mistakes and a Willis McGee 69 yard run third down Andre Johnson dropped the football and Miami forced to punch now there's a big difference between that drop and some of the drops that he had in the first half that drop prevented Miami from converting a on a third down to get a first down some of the drops they had earlier were on third and long second and long that time Andre Johnson I think looking up field mm -hmm. a little bit too quick before he grabbed the football Freddie Capshaw had one blocked earlier able to take this away and not his best kick he's got a lot of good bounces tonight here's another one 45 yard punt down to the 13 long field for Pittsburgh when we come back the Panthers trail number one Miami by seven college football Thursday night presented by Circuit City Walt Harris the coach of the Panthers turned 56 earlier this month he has turned around a once proud program and uh, righted it uh, to where the Panther fans are back behind it nine straight wins five conference wins in one season as well he's gunning for his third straight bowl which would have been the fourth in six years at Pitt. nice record for Walt Harris great offensive pedigree as uh, Kirk alluded to earlier Brandon Myrie's first down run stretches it out to the yellow line and a first down at the 23. Six footer out of Cincinnati, Alabama transfer. Myrie's, I'm telling you, this guy, and, and I think we all saw him in Alabama. Look at how hard he runs. You know, he he uses his uh, the hand off to football very very well, where he's almost like trying to pass the defender by as he cuts behind him. He's almost got 100 yards. He's up to 97 yards already. Here with a lot of football to be played, but this guy, nice combination of quickness and power. Myrie was the starting back when the season began, but then Raymond Kirkley got the job for a game. They turned to Marcus Furman, the sophomore, for a couple of games. Myrie, then back to Kirkley, and nobody won the job. They gave all three guys a great opportunity to win the job, and nobody did. And then Myrie grabbed this thing by the horns. And uh, he's not giving it up, especially that 161 in Blacksburg told everyone who the back is for the Panthers. His first down carry will gain only a yard. Here's Dr. Jerry Putch. Guys, when we sat and talked to Brandon Myrie last night, you heard Herbie just a minute ago mention how he cut behind a defender. He said the biggest difference from him in sitting out a year after the transfer to Alabama was he spent the entire year along with getting in better shape and conditioning, watching film and learning to be a better running back. By, by watching film with some of the coaches and talking to some of the offensive coaches, he learned that you can do that. You can cut behind a defender. That's one less guy you have to run over or tackle you have to break if you're a smart once you break the line of scrimmage. So he said watching film helped him immensely. He said, I've got probably half my yards by being smart this year and not having to be that physical. You know, Doc, I'll never forget when Sean Alexander left Alabama, and I said, who's going to be the next back for the Crimson Tide? He said, watch this young guy, Brandon Myrie, before he transferred. He felt he'd be the great back, the next great back at Alabama. Second and eight. He had Fitzgerald, their big receiver at the bottom of the screen. Option Myrie. Speed to get out there. He cut it back inside. And real nice running instincts there, Coach, to get him out to third and a couple of yards. Well, the thing I like about Myrie, it looks like every single time he gets hit, he moves forward. Mm -hmm. I have not seen him get knocked back yet. And this is Miami's defense. Again, a perfect opportunity. He cuts back, protects the football real well, and then boom, see, he delivers the blow just before the point of contact. This is a kid who's been around tough times as well, raised in a rough section of Cincinnati mm. in a single parent household. He calls his mom Dolores a saint. He went to high school at Winton Woods High School that turned out 150 Division I players. Very few as good as Myrie. A flag here before the play is snapped. And Alfonso Marshall of Miami, the DB, saying Lamar Slade moved as receiver spot, and that's going to make it third and seven. Prior to the snap, receivers on the offense, five yard penalty. Touchdown. Touchdown in the first quarter. Having Myrie as part of this offense for Walt Harris is imperative because he. He loves balance. You know, we always talk about how sophisticated his passing scheme is and how it's evolved over the years. And, of course, he's got to have a quarterback who makes good decisions. But having that back back there mm -hmm. to take the pressure off the quarterback in the passing game is crucial. I recommend Miami watch Rutherford out of run, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> On the 26, they need to get to the 34. Rutherford with time finds Fitzgerald. First down. 
Good grab by Larry Fitzgerald. Flag comes in late as well. Sailed in. That came from. That came from the third row in the stands. First time they were able to get it to Fitzgerald since the first quarter. Well, looks like it's uh, going to be on Miami after the play. A five-yard mask. And Pittsburgh will have it near the 40. Face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Interesting decision here by Randy Shannon. The zone blitz. He's going to drop a defensive lineman, 99, Andrew Williams, and he's got a defensive back. I mean, they knew that they're going to try to go underneath to Fitzgerald, and still they were able to exploit that and pick it up. Very slight face mask, and not for the first down for Pittsburgh. The definitive five-yard face mask there. They had the first down with the catch alone, and this snap will take us inside. One minute, third quarter at the Orange Bowl. Rough the first, could not get to the edge, pulled down by D.J. Williams. Well, a couple of times you've seen the speed of D.J. Williams. Mm -hmm. You know, sitting here, and I just wanted to make sure that I looked up the scoreboard again. It's only 21-14. Yeah. I mean, it was almost like Miami was a given to win this ball game, and they were winning it, and we're just sitting here, it's a matter of time. You know, one play, and psh, it scored. It's 21-14 Miami over Pitt going into the fourth quarter. The thing that's crazy is yeah. one play it could be 21-21 yeah. and two plays it could be 35-14. Exactly. Just one of those kind of games. Larry Fitzgerald is bleeding. You can see the blood there from his lip. And they see it all over his jersey mm. because of the rules that were put in uh, now some five years ago. Fitzgerald is forced to come out until the bleeding stops. And because of the injury to Billy Gaines, the Panthers are thin at receiver, so it's tough to go to these four receiver sets with Fitzgerald out. Second and 15. Rutherford's pass high in the air and incomplete. Fines couldn't come down with it. And it was in danger of going back the other way as well. Pittsburgh's had to bring in a walk on. Yogi Roth, number 82 to come in and fill in some of these receiver sets. That, that almost looked like the NHL. You know, that, that was some serious blood flow there. That's pretty tough when they got a face mask on. That's right. To get that kind of strength. Need to get to midfield. There's Yogi Roth, 82. Yogi's in motion. Rutherford throws. It is out of bounds. Incomplete. They say a foot on the sideline. The Pittsburgh staff cannot believe Lamar Slade was not in bounds, and they'll punch it away here at the end of the third quarter. Let's get a look here. Officials seem to be pretty definitive about the call. It looked good from here, but I'm sure. Oh boy. Ooh, he's in. You know why he's the in pitter pattern. The left foot come I, down before the right. The he saw the right, the left came in yeah. first. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Andy Lee to kick it away. Roscoe Parrish awaits. Snaps were high earlier. They've been better recently. Good snap, good punt. Ooh. Punt that covers 45 yards and is fair caught by Roscoe Parrish at the 20 yard line. Larry's Larry Coker's team plus seven with the ball here at the end of the quarter. Funny John Cooper of course Ohio State Michigan week talking a lot about coach Cooper John Cooper a part of both lives of the head coaches here and Walt Harris and Larry Coker both serve, although not for a, a long time together, a very short period uh, in Columbus on Coop staff. Walt Harris responsible for kind of revolutionizing the Ohio State passing game. Those great years, remember Terry Glenn and Bobby Hoying, Eddie George. Final play of the quarter. Darcy looked long, it was covered. Nowhere to go except down. He is sacked by Brian Guzik, just a hard-nosed Western PA kid coming up with the play. The first sack by the Panthers, just the eighth sack of the Miami quarterback this season. 
Off we go to the fourth quarter, and it's a ball game. The lone score of the third. 30 yards, Dorsey to Andre Johnson. Final 15 minutes. The national champs lead by seven. Tariko Lee Corso, Kirk Herb Street, Dr. Jerry Punch. Chris Fowler, Trev Alberts, Mark May, our studio crew with us here tonight. First down throw for Dorsey. The first option's covered. This is ad lib now and thrown away as Roscoe Parrish was on the near side. And a marker down for roughing the passer. Dorsey got hit late. Brian Guzik just pushed him, but he pushed him too late. It was all about the timing of the push. It wasn't how physical Guza came through. It was just that he made a he made a mistake. It's a second long. It's an incomplete pass. Yeah. And he tries to almost catch him, realizing that he'd probably pushed him a little bit late. It wasn't real physical. Yes. Dorsey pops up. He he's loving it. You can't do it. It's almost no. they, sh they should have a five and a 15 yard roughing the passer as well. That's a Good five. Point. That's five. Yeah. yeah. Want to make that rule change? Yeah, can we do it by book. next week? <laughs> add that to your book. Add that to the. Let's write it in the book, and we can send it into the American Football Coaches Association. Get that to Mo and get it to our guy for next preseason. Look at Miami, 158 oh, and two, extraordinary. Just the loss to West Virginia, 97, and the hurricane moved game against East Carolina that was played in Raleigh. Deep ball, Andre Johnson in stride to the 30. 39 first down yards. Second time those two have hooked up here in this second half. Well, the ball is perfectly thrown, oh. but the, the defensive back, Spencer's got to turn and find it, but the ball could oh. not be any right, better, better thrown than the way he put it right there. The, the only guy that throws a ball better than that might have been Rex Grossman. He throws every pass like that, but that was an absolute perfect pass from Dorsey to Johnson. They finally get Johnson in the game. Got him downfield. Johnson, the low receiver, two tight ends. McGahee probes forward for five. There's Jerry Punch with another Miami quarterback legend. And how about the architect of the 1984 Orange Bowl upset of Nebraska that developed a national championship for the Hurricanes? Bernie Kosar. Bernie, thanks for coming out and talking a little bit. Uh, talk about Ken Dorsey. They say he's not quite as flashy as some of you guys that came before, but how do you measure leadership? Well, he, perfect timing to come down and talk about Ken after a great audible like that and you know, picking the bump and run coverage. But coming from me, someone who wasn't probably the most flashy athletic guy myself, Ken has an unbelievable leadership. His competitiveness and the way he plays at the end of games and in tough situations, um, he's an outstanding champion. Ask you about the Heisman after the play. Second and six is the play, Jerry. It's a play action Dorsey pass down the seam. First and goal, Miami. Quantrin Hill, 13th catch of the year for the fullback. Go ahead, Doc. His detractors say he does not have Heisman type numbers and doesn't have Heisman type plays. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I really disagree with that. I, I've been a little disappointed. I think a lot of some of the criticism that he's been receiving is almost personal and a little vicious. And, and Ken's conducted himself in an outstanding way. And the way he plays on the field, I think, speaks for itself. And he's doing and winning against some of the toughest competition in the country. Michael? First and goal, Jerry McGahee turns the corner. Dives for the end. There is the 1-1-2 one, one, punch. 1-1 one, one is Dorsey. 2 is McGahee. Touchdown 19 on the year for Willis. Extra point number 48 on the year for Todd Stevens. Thanks to Bernie Kozar for joining us as he watched Miami exhale for the first time here tonight. All those Heisman guys that just want to give you Dorsey's cut. Seven for nine, 143, a touchdown set up that one in the second quarter. When he needed to get it, Dorsey's the champion. I'm telling you. Well, they slid back on their couches in Iowa City and in Pullman. The Trojan fans, the Irish fans, the Sooner fans, Norman, all those hoping that either Ohio State or Miami would stub their toe. Miami was in trouble. They now lead by two scores. Pittsburgh will have 80 yards to go to get closer. 
Willis McGahee. Watch this touchdown run. Gives you an idea about the athletic ability. It, it's, again, the rare combination power and speed and athletic ability. We've seen some great backs in the country this year. It's a great argument. Willis McGahee, Larry Johnson, Chris Brown, they're all great backs, and they all have that combination of power and speed. From the 20, Rod Rutherford hit as he threw, incomplete. Vince Wolford put on the pressure. You know, McGahee now is over 1,300 yards in the season. This is one of the best plays that I've seen in the second half. Qu Quadrant Hill, number 23, comes out of the backfield. Right. Now, you get to give Rob Chesinski really good grades for pulling this play. This is the first time I've seen this play tonight. He pulled it at the right time. He set up the McKay's run. Wonderful call by Chesinski. 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 And ball. a great play by Hill. And Dorsey makes McGahee look good. It's all part of this offense. When it comes to the passing game, it's not just defending receivers. You got to defend the backs out of the backfield, the tight end. They hit you in so Everything. many different ways. And, you know, we, we continue to talk about Dorsey and what he does, McGahee and what he does. But it's the distribution, I think, of what Ken Dorsey does in the passing game the last three years. Remember, remember uh, the last couple of years, and to deal with Clinton Portis catching them out of the backfield. Najee Davenport, the yeah, fullback. Remember? How many times that did he play. slide out? That play, that right play there. he made famous in Miami. That was a four-yard pass completion to Chris Wilson that for the life of me, I can't tell you why it wasn't pass interference. Roger McIntosh was uh, riding him like a two-year-old on a dad's shoulders. Third and six. They need to get to the 30. Rutherford's going to run for it. Made a nice move on Jonathan Vilma. He's going to be very close for the first down. The spot looks like it will give it to him. Just had to touch the 30 or our yellow line, and he's over it for a first down. Good effort. Great individual effort. He's been doing that most of this game. When things have broken down, he's been able to take those linebackers on one-on-one, -on -one, whether he's lowering yeah. his shoulder or trying to find a little bit of room to pick up first downs. If Miami continues to win, the team that they play in the Fiesta Bowl better have a quarterback that can scramble or they won't make many yards. This guy is good as Rutherford. From the 30, deep drop Rutherford. Looking long ball. Oh, the man broke wide open. Binds. And he had to wait for it. And he got knocked out of his hands. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. Binds is shaken up. Rutherford couldn't get enough on the ball. Binds was waiting for it almost like a fair catch. And he got knocked down by Maurice Sykes. Defensive backs coach Mark Stoops over there with his guys in the secondary. They're just as happy with the play as he is disappointed that Bynes got so free. This, this, you know, the ball is uh, underthrown, and I don't, man, what a hit by Sykes, but I don't think Rutherford realized that Bynes was going to break free like that. Now it becomes a fair catch. You're a sitting duck. Sykes recovered nicely. Watch this big hit. Well, you just hope that the worst of it was Bynes yeah. getting the wind knocked out of him. The way he was exposed and took that hit. He's sitting up now. It clearly was not possession, obviously. Well, they lost Fitzgerald with the bloodied nose earlier, and now... A very sore Roosevelt Bynes works his way over. Orange Bowl standing ovation. Mm -hmm. Bynes coming, coming off the field there from Fort Lauderdale. Mark Stoops, younger brother of Bobby, the head coach at Oklahoma, and Mike Stoops, defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, doing a good job here with the secondary. You know, he's his secondary coach. He lost his five, top five defensive backs off the best secondary in the nation. Everybody mm -hmm. thought, what a weakness. Well, coming into this game, Leading the nation in pass defense, leading the nation in pass defense efficiency. Mark Stoops, very enthusiastic, just like the other Stoops brothers, has brought that kind of attitude here to help this Miami secondary out. They're playing great. They have played great throughout the season, Kirk. Pass defense, number one in the nation, as you see there. And there are the numbers they've allowed Rod Rutherford tonight. Just a, a great guy as well. Real pleasure to be around. And that's uh, you know, what, what a family tree oh, of coaches yeah. they're developing here. And 
You know, we talk about Bob and Mike all the time, but that guy, he's he, the young one not too far behind, he's right? He's the youngest, and he's moving up the, uh, the ladder, and you got to believe as Mike gets an opportunity, I'm sure Mark will probably be uh, involved as a coordinator very soon down the road. Second and ten, we have movement. Was it uh, the offensive lineman Matt Morgan or the Miami defender? It was Morgan, and Pittsburgh will be five farther back. Riley stops. Ball starts on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. ESPN 2 College Football Saturday. Ralph Friedgen's Maryland team will take on a Virginia Cavalier team that's improved every week this year. Then Eli Manning and Ole Miss will take on LSU. Two teams trying to stop the bleeding. College Football Saturday. Doubleheader on ESPN 2 at 8.30 Eastern Time. The Wild West, as Chris Fowler put it, that's correct uh, with what's happened there this year. In the SEC. Empty backfield. Rutherford needs 15. Trying to elude the rush of William Joseph. Just threw it away. Out of the pocket. You can do that. In this half, guys, Rutherford is 3 of 8 compared to Ken Dorsey, 7 of 9. You guys uh, said when we started the second half, the quarterback that gets hot will be the team that changes what happens in this game. And it's Rutherford not getting hot. And it's Miami's defense staying hot as well. It's also adjustments. You know, everybody tries to make adjustments at halftime, but watching Miami on both sides of the ball in the second half, that's why they're the number one team in the country. What you've seen here in the second half from Dorsey, McGahee on offense, and Jonathan Vilma and company on defense. I want to get this note in before I forget. Rob Chizinski and Randy Shannon. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'll give you a little trivia. Yeah. I think they're the only two former players that serve as coordinators on their schools right now in the nation. I don't think we couldn't find like Ed, Chris Felic and all the guys at oh, research looking up. Then it didn't, we, didn't happen if Felix couldn't yeah, find okay, we Nicks. couldn't find an entire nation, we could not find two former players in yep. a highly ranked program, both coordinators like those two men that played there. That's a great that's a great stat. It is a good stat. And it tells you about the legacy and these guys understanding what it takes to win here. It's very different at Miami than trying to win at some of these other programs. You know, trying to win it a Tennessee or trying to win it at Nebraska or Florida State. It's, it's a different feel here at Miami. Well, let's be honest. This is a pro city yep. without you know, with pro teams in all four major sports. And the Orange Bowl is, uh, I, I love this place because of its history. And you can look at places and say the Flutie play happened there yep. 18 years ago. Namath ran out of that tunnel. Winslow is dragged off that. You know, you've seen everything here, okay? But this isn't a modern stadium. The stadium's in terrible shape, to be very candid. So you don't have a stadium to draw people to like you have at Tennessee or Michigan or Ohio State. Fitzgerald back in the game. Rutherford throws to him complete for a first down at the 41 yard line. So bloodied with the nose. Fitzgerald comes back in and gains 16. You know what though? I think that's part of the hunger that they maintain. That's the edge that Miami has. They don't have the brand new facilities and the leather couches and the big screen TVs. These guys are just here to play football. They are here on a mission and when they're young they learn early that you're here to win national championships and it's not about having the greatest facilities and having, you know, it's, it's it's a team and that's why they're, they've won 31 straight they're able to maintain that hunger and that attitude that few teams can maintain from the 41 they fake it in the belly Rutherford loading up long for Fitzgerald couldn't make the play in the air that time with Sean Taylor step for step that's the free safety back there who had a punt return in the first quarter you got him a New Jersey after he was bleeding looked to be bleeding a little bit more as well but Taylor's got size too so he's not only athletic he's been making yeah. plays all night tonight John Taylor you know he, he's six foot three as you said before and 220 pounds that's a big safety but the thing I like about him the most he seems to have a sixth sense of moving quickly to the ball with good makeup speed but that's what you guys were talking about earlier that safety's home yeah oh yeah they they, they uh, you know you lost Ed Reed off of this defense last year Sean Taylor's been asked to step in is is really filled that gap quarterback draw Vilma it's Rutherford after a gain of nine you have third and a long yard coming up as we approach 11 minutes here in the fourth. You know, he's only a sophomore. And he's, as a starter, he's still a young player. 
Getting back to Mark Stoops, he feels that Sean Taylor, before it's all said and done, will be one of those special, special players for the Miami Hurricanes by the time he's done playing football here. Not only that, play special teams. Locked a punt, returned a punt for a touchdown. Yeah. Get all over the field. Huge play, officially third and two. Antrell Roll comes in off the corner. They kind of throw that fade end zone route for Fitzgerald, and it's intercepted by Marshall. Oh, wait a minute, is it incomplete? Hang on a second, it's incomplete. It came down, and the ball came out, so it is not a catch. It's ruled incomplete. Are they going to kick here on fourth and two at midfield? Yes, they are going to punt with 10.40 to go. Yeah, interesting play call there. Interesting that play call on third and short like that, but you know, uh, they were starting to cheat seven or eight guys in the box. He almost had to get it outside, but how about Miami's adjustment to that fade? Yeah. Okay. Fitzgerald is, is, is now being double teamed every time they try to put the ball up in the air, but uh, Rod Rutherford needs to give him a better chance by putting it in a place where he can make that play. Lee, I take the delay of game penalty here. That's the snapper who wasn't sure which right. guy was going to snap, Jonathan Sitter. You don't want a snapper rushing to snap, do you? Not no, yeah, you do. He's yeah, we better. Thanks. Oh, perfect. Thanks. I was waiting. I was That's waiting. good. It's rain. Give me the clothespins. You're going to hang me out to dry like that. <laughs> Harris from the 12. Roscoe Danson staying alive, trying to get to the sideline. And up the sideline, Roscoe Parrish tripped up at the 40-yard line. He almost had one there. The punt was 39. The return was 40. And the net of minus one doesn't help the good snap from Sitter. Remember a guy by the name of Santana Moss? He used to play here. I know this is a young wide receiver at Miami, but look at the blocks. They're set up perfectly. Look at the speed there and the quickness. I'm telling you. This guy, Roscoe Parrish, is going to be another Santana Moss here for Miami. Look at him staying back oh, there. The thing I like about him the most is once he saw that open, there was no more. Ch -ch -ch -ch. It was. <laughs> and that's what you like about a guy returning a punt. Chris Wilson was the one who made the touchdown saving tackle as Parrish, the Richard freshman out of Miami Senior High School, was coming off the field. And Wilson is the one who they're looking at over there on the sideline with 10 20 to go. Chris, who's done a very good job this year in the offense stretching the field. Down the middle is some good speed. 15 catches on the season, an average of over 20 yards per. Those of you just joining us, Sports Center comes up as soon as we're done from the Orange Bowl in Miami. This college football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. Miami is looking for a 32nd consecutive win at what I contend is one of the great accomplishments in sports here in the last five years see Pittsburgh's Brandon Myrie has run for over 100 yards part of the Panthers total but Willis McGahee 156 and two touchdowns Ken Dorsey's numbers don't look good in the first half they weren't good but he's been very sharp seven of nine in the second half Larry Coker's team is in position to stay in position and be two wins from the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl January 3rd. <laughs> Ethnic Sands in motion has the ball double reverse Johnson here comes Andre Johnson on the move Panthers are there and waiting for him and bring Johnson down for a loss of two we were with us earlier Kevin Beard starting flanker injured his knee out for the season for Miami we love Kenny tonight having fun talking about Heisman numbers and I just want you to Check out right here. This is where it's all about. When you're a quarterback, you get a chance to blow somebody up. And here he comes. Here we come. Here we. Here we. Here we. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Here we come. There. There it is. He leg whipped him. <laughs> that should have been a penalty. Leg whipping him. <laughs> Had to call him out for Brett Romberg. Is his roommate the center? He's gonna love that block. Penalty marker down. Yeah, no, sorry. Timeout. Not a penalty marker. Panther timeout. We step out as well. Miami by 14.
ESPN College Football Thursday Night, presented by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And in part by Audi, with the performance and safety benefits of Quattro all-wheel drive in every model line. Back at the Orange Bowl in Miami. With Sports Center coming up as soon as we are done. Miami leading by 14 with 9 31 left. Here in the fourth. This is second and 12 after the two yard loss in the reverse. And Miami putting it in the air. Dorsey to McGahee. What a good play by Gerald Hayes. That gives you an example of why he's such a good player. Gerald Hayes, it's the first Pittsburgh defensive man in 14 years to achieve three consecutive 100 tackle seasons, 103. We talked about Gerald in the beginning of the ball game that we thought that he would spy on McGee in all situations, he even screens, and there he is making a great play. He's been able to beat McGee to the corner quite a bit unfortunately the rest of the defense isn't always been flowing <laughs> yeah. with him so McGahee's had to cut back because of the speed of Hayes to get outside there he's a big kid too you want to well, talk about a kid who wants it yeah February a Friday linebacker coach out recruiting seven o'clock at night knock on the door Gerald Hayes came to watch film in February on a Friday night wow. at seven o'clock instead of going out talk about a guy who wants it Gerald Hayes Kane's timeout be right back with the OB. 14 aerial views courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. With us is the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, continuing a 77-year tradition as the aerial ambassador and icon of the 102-year-old company. Great to have the Goodyear Blimp with us tonight at the Orange Bowl. You know, it's a big game when they got a blimp in the building. Wow. We got, time, we got, hey, Chris, Trev, and Mark here. And a makeup lady. We knew it was big when they had a makeup lady. Yeah, when they, that's, you're, you're right. They told us that in the meeting. The makeup lady came in. For this Third one. and 11. McGahee inside handoff track down from behind by Hayes, who set him up for a shot from Tez Morris, mm. redshirt freshman out of Hamilton, Ohio. There's that kid one more time. Hayes, I talked about him knocking on the coach's door February, Friday night to look at film. He also asked with his coaches, ask the NFL scouts what I need to do better. I want to work on all the little stuff. And he focused on the little stuff. Well, looky here. We're going to try a field goal for 59 yards for Severs. Miami brings someone on the field to try to return it. It'll be just a pooch punt. Oh, that's a good one. Uh -uh. It's, uh, you know, almost Not like good. the rugby punts that we've been seeing the no. last couple of weeks. It'll be out of bounds at the 27, so that really did no good. No. I'd practice that a little longer if I was Miami. It did not look. So they got good. a few things they can work on. Absolutely. But work on the pooch kick. Now before we get leave, Gerald Hayes, Mel Kuyper Jr., ESPN's guru. Draft guru. The best middle linebacker in college football, ranked number 11 among senior pro prospects in the nation. 11? That guy right. Number 11. Oh, good. I, I talked Mel Kuyper. Talked to some NFL personnel who just happened to be in, not only for the game, but just studying some tape with the Miami coaches. And, they're well aware. I brought up Gerald Hayes, and their eyes lit up. People are well aware of him and what he can do at the next level. Must score drive for the Panthers. Can they hit a big one? And Rutherford got out of there and threw it. It's caught for just a yard by Lamar Slade, who got thrown down by roll after the whistle, and they'll bang him 15 because it happened after the whistle. Dead ball, personal foul. That's the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Let's go check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys updating Roosevelt Bond. You saw him take that uh, pretty hard lick to the chest a little bit ago. They've been examined him on the sidelines. And basically a contusion, a bruise to the sternum and rib area. Bynes waiting for that pass and got hit uh, with his arms in the air. Earlier you saw Larry Fitzgerald with a bloody nose on the face mask. Uh, Fitzgerald told the players that, uh, told the team that the fist came inside the helmet and popped him in the nose. That's why the bloody nose uh, with the face mask. And, of course, uh, Will Fork uh, done for the night to the defensive lineman for Miami. Now it's two Miami linemen done for the night. Little shovel pass to Myrie. Was a lot of total yards here tonight. Brandon already over 100 yards rushing at seven receiving yards there. Yeah, we're almost talking like this is 
a game that you can put in the books and move on. But for Pittsburgh right now, they're thinking, let's score quick. You know, to kind of try to get a big play here. I don't know if they can afford to try to continue to get four yards, six yards, even if they're successful moving the ball downfield because it's going to take too much time. With seven minutes and counting, yeah. they've got to hit a quick strike. But if they go for a too quick a stri strike, Miami's going to intercept it and go the other way. Draw by Reed. Hole closes quick. D.J. Williams comes in there. Join Matt Walters making the tackle. Walters, a fifth-year senior out of Melbourne, Florida. D.J. Williams, the former high school player of the year, is a running back. Uh, De La Salle, Concord, California. Have they lost yet? They're still rolling along, I guess, huh? <laughs> One of the best. When was the last time they lost? I'm sure D.J. Well Williams is games. middle school. <laughs> Probably. They just keep going. Other thing is they play games all over the country. In Hawaii. Yeah. They go to Hawaii. Yes, they go all over. <laughs> Did your high school play in uh, no. Hawaii League? We played it right here in this stadium. You played high school football Absolutely. here? Absolutely. I played high school football, and I told Kirk before, and you guys were laughing, we played on Saturday yeah. nights because the University of Miami wasn't good enough to play on Saturday nights. They played on Friday nights. So this is your old hood. You this used to hang here. Oh, this, this is my is hood right here. Right this is where it all started, my friend. This is this, where the sunshine is. This is it right here. Oh, my God, it's, it's starting. Here. Everywhere we go, he's got some hook from the 45. Rutherford, good coverage, but a nice on-time throw to Lamar Slade. Picked up six to the 39. They're getting a little pushy behind the play now and at each tackle point. And the Panthers have to put a little hop in their step. Down 14. Doc? Guys, coaches on the Pittsburgh sideline reminding the Panther players, remember what happened at Blacksburg, Virginia? We were down by two touchdowns late to the third rank uh, Hokies, and we came back. Remember, guys, uh, a late surge, uh, number one led it, and Rod Rutherford uh, was, was hitting him all over the field. Down by 14 points late. They pulled off the win over Virginia Tech. Trying to do it again here in the Big East and win a share of the conference title. Good opening, Myrie up the middle. Myrie and Williams are going to be seeing each other in their sleep tonight. How many collisions have they had? First down at the 28. Well, that was a nice call by Wall Harris and the offensive staff. What they did is they put three receivers one side, one receiver the other. Everybody in the linebackers from Miami split, split out Villia was the only guy, Vilma was the only guy in the middle, and they just option run him. Boy, that was a nice call by Walt Harris. They've been doing that a lot tonight where they spread out the Miami yeah. defense with their formations, and it leaves them with the numbers that they want inside to run the football. Hey, guys, Pitt's got to get moving here. Yeah, Five gotta, and a half left. they gotta, they got to have a little bit more urgency in and out of the huddle. Yep. The flag comes in. They only have one timeout left, so if they do kick it off to Miami, then the Canes will have to... Uh, they pick up one or two first downs. That's if Pitt scores here. Right of the snap. Ball starts on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. We talk about a Pittsburgh program being turned around. Uh, it's all around the athletic department. Steve Peterson, their athletic oh, director, yeah. came from Nebraska. They now have the Peterson Event Center. It's not named after Steve, the new AD. Uh, he's been there now for almost five years. But... Uh, it's the new basketball building, Pittsburgh's preseason number four in the ESPN USA Today coaches poll. Brandon Knight, Revan's brother, a great point guard to lead them. Exciting times in Western PA. Rutherford flushed again. Threw it on the run. This one is caught. A tremendous hit again by Sean Taylor, but Lamar Slade hung on. Man, is he a hit? Just goes to show you again, we've said it over and over tonight. Protection breaks down. You've got a quarterback who's got some mobility, who can buy a little bit of time. Downfield, he sees Slay the whole time, and nobody was on it. Taylor came over to blow him up, but he sat right down in that void and made the catch, and it was a good job for the quarterback running for his life to find him. You know who he looked like? He looked like Michael Vick that time. Remember how he used to yeah. roll out to the right with that left hand and go... Yeah. Got to have that speed to get out of that trouble, though. Yeah. Yep. From the 15, Rutherford. Underneath Yogi Roth. The walk-on takes it down to the three. 12 yards. That is Yogi's first catch of the season. Hey, boo-boo. <laughs> Clock stopping, of course, with every first down. All of a sudden, they get inside this five-yard line. 
We know what they like to do, but let's see if they try to spread them out and run the football. Well, remember, they, they put up our man Fitzgerald one way, and they hit. They hit Bynes the right there. The post. And here he is yeah. down at the bottom now. Let's see. And they, they continue to go with Al Marshall. Uh, they had to take a timeout. It will be Pittsburgh's last. Can't afford a mistake down here. Must score situation. Be right back. 64,897 the attendance tonight here at the legendary Orange Bowl site of five Super Bowls and a Baker's dozen national championship deciding games. Pittsburgh trying to climb back in here a Panther win tonight. They would share the Big East title no matter what. They've marched down the field and try to get within one touchdown on the next three tries. Rutherford follows the fullback polite walks into the end zone touchdown Good drive guys outstanding drive for this team. You know, they will not go away. This is an outstanding call We're all talking about what are they gonna go with are they gonna try to throw the football? They're gonna go with the option here, and he's just gonna follow polite right through the hole polite's untouched so if the your leading blockers untouched. You're going to walk in as a quarterback. That was just the like the old Ohio State ISO play, except the quarterback just was a tailback. Boom! Nice play. David Abdul, the freshman, true freshman, has really solidified the kicking game for the Panthers. Pounds through the extra point. You got that over the net too. This kid's got a strong leg as well. Rod Rutherford was five of five on that drive for 47 yards and a three-yard touchdown run. Takes the Panthers eight plays, 73 yards, and hold the phone. The guys from Western PA are still in it. Pittsburgh, an impressive score drive, but here's where they sit now. Down seven, out of timeouts, 437 to go. So they're going to have to turn it over to their defense to try and stop Miami, or at least limit them to one or two first downs at the most, since they have no timeouts. Walt Harris talking to Marcus Furman, his sophomore running back. Roosevelt Bynes there as well. Jason gathers from the one. Has a little bit of an opening, and it closes up quickly at the 23. Nice tackle by Malcolm Postel, backup linebacker. NBA Friday on ESPN. It starts with NBA shoot-around at 7.30 Eastern with Kevin Frazier and Tim Hardaway. Then Allen Iverson and the Sixers go to Toronto, and you'll see Elton Brand and the exciting LA Clippers take on the Denver Nuggets. Our NBA Friday doubleheader tomorrow night on ESPN. You're talking about first downs and how many they can give up. Being out of timeouts, I think it depends on how quickly Miami were to gain a first down. If it were three, maybe on third down, they converted. Maybe, well, now you're talking about this game coming down to just a final minute or so. Don't forget, they, they're very good at creating turnovers. 31 on the year. From the 22, Jason Gathers runs for four and a flag down for holding. But thrown right at Eric Winston. So interesting that Gathers comes in for his first mm. carry of the night. And now McGahee comes in off the bench. First and 20. Here's Willis back in there. Spot of the foul. Repeat first down. You know they're going to be in first and and long here. You got to wonder the confidence that Miami has. It, it makes sense logically to run the football to keep the clock moving, but with as much confidence again that Larry Coker has and Ken Dorsey. Got to wonder if they try to catch him off guard, not necessarily here, but later on, try to throw the football to catch Pitt off guard. First and 20, McGahee. Boy, Pittsburgh's defense still hitting out there at the 18-yard line. Brett Romberg slow to get up. Miami center took a shot on the knee there, and he's coming off. So Romberg, who is a rock and roll musician, Dorsey's roommate, comes out, and Joel Rodriguez, the sophomore center, comes in. Very important. New center, quarterback, the center quarterback exchange. Something to watch. Lee, anytime yep. we see an injury, you always talk about how important it is to get a few snaps, but in right. this case, you can't do that. But I used to tell the quarterback is on new center, make sure you get the football first with a new center. Don't be pulling out of there too fast. 
Second and 14. Good look at the snap there. Dorsey's got it. He's looking for somebody open downfield and just gets rid of it. As he was being pressured, that stops the clock here at 317 to go. That was my point. Would they try it on second down? Try it was good play action. Try to catch him off guard. Try to catch him napping to come backside to McGahee, but the Pittsburgh defense very disciplined there. All roads, boy, he has put together a heck of a package tonight. And his kids are executing it against one of the best offenses in the country. And remember, I know this is ahead of itself, but if they do stop him, remember, Oak Capshaw's had four blocked this year, one by Pitt tonight. Remember that. That's a very important play, two plays from now. New center for a shotgun snap, third and 14. Executed Ooh. a little high from Rodriguez. Dorsey throws underneath McGahee. Put on the brakes, but could not escape Hayes. So Pittsburgh can get the ball back probably with about 2.20 left on the clock. Get Paul Rhodes. Is he fired up or what? Okay, the interesting point was that Miami has played pretty error free tonight, but one holding penalty has got them a chance to lose this football game. That one holding penalty when they needed a first down, yeah. put them way back. Yep. That could be the difference in this game. At least send it into overtime. Capshaw to punt. Robinson awaits. They've got 10 lined up to come at Freddie Capshaw. Taking all their sweet time. Milk every second of that clock. And Mike, once they put a, a real constricted formation like this, it's better to return against it. Good Look, there's time. nobody within 20 yards of no, there isn't. From the 28, take it straight up the field as Robinson tries to get the corner on Miami. You don't do that. Ball came out, but he was down first at the 32 yard line. A marker is down over at midfield. What Miami did there was very, very important and very smart. They brought their formation in so they wouldn't get it blocked, but they almost got a return against And a block in the back is coming up here on Pittsburgh. Uh, my lip reading skills are still functioning properly. Remember, Sports Center, as soon as we're done, we'll hear from uh, Chris and Mark and Trev as well. There's Bynes, who took the shot earlier, coming off slowly. Mostly under his own power, fortunately. We got a long explanation coming up yep, here. This will be good. Settling. Blocking the back against the kicking team. After the reception, 10 yard penalty, first down. Hmm. Is that something the first you don't see? That's rare that you get a something you don't see. Yeah. Pitt catches a break with a couple penalties here. Yes, two penalties. In the last few plays. And those penalties almost beat Miami early in wow. the season. Wow. And Larry Coker was very concerned about the penalties. Here we go, boys. Walt Harris's offenses are known for their ability to execute the two minutes. They work on this a lot in practice. 58 yards away from tying the game. Rutherford in trouble. Rutherford is sacked for the sixth time tonight. And remember, no timeouts. Yep. Loss of seven. William Joseph out of Edison High School here in Miami made that play. A little more time. Now it's closing up. Face mask. Face mask flag. Is it five or 15? Andrew Williams got him. Five, maybe. Mm hmm. Yep. Well, the pressure is, it's, it's also great coverage with yep. the pressure up front. Andrew Williams comes in. Mm -hmm. Inadvertently again yeah. holds on to the face mask on the defense five-yard penalty yes. Feet second down the, the last two plays Miami's their front four pin in the ears back just coming after Rutherford a good coverage downfield by the, the seven The seven in coverage by Miami remember in their four receiver set their third and fourth receivers are not here Finds his hurt Billy Gaines back in Pittsburgh with a foot injury Rutherford to Yogi Roth the walk-on couldn't grab it incomplete and that would have been fines or gains there. Well, it's obvious right now, Kirk and I, I bet you were thinking the same thing. 
throw the ball yep. to Larry Fitzgerald, not Yogi Berra. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to win the ball game, you got to get the ball anywhere near number one, Larry Fitzgerald. The problem is you're thinking that, I'm thinking that, and you know who so else what? Is? Well, Randy Shannon's thinking that in the last two plays. I've been watching him. They've got a guy following him downfield and a safety also sizing up. So Double coverage, still He'll throw. Right? He'll get it. They've got Eric the Gill, a tight end in the slot there. Their tight end's out, too. I forgot that. Rutherford's throw. It's caught by I say nothing. Put a guy in yeah. front of him, put a guy in back of him. The don't ever try to throw the ball to anybody except this guy, Larry Fitzgerald, so they, right now. Again, they tried to do that. They're going to put coverage. They got a corner that's following them, a oh. safety behind them. Oh. Hey, you, they, they, where's that been all game, though? I know. But. Guys, this is amazing. Their third, fourth, and fifth receiving option not on the field because of injury. Underneath, same place, same town. Fitzgerald, first down at the 35. Clock stops to move the chains. A buck 13 to go. Pittsburgh out of timeouts. See Pittsburgh and see the composure. See what I talked about with Walt Harris' system. This yes. is something they're very comfortable in, even though it's against all odds here without the timeouts. And it helps Six. to have Larry Fitzgerald on your team. 65,000 strong. The orange ball on their feet. The blitz not picked up. And the pass incomplete for Lamar Slade. DJ Williams came off the corner to put the heat on. A buck six to go. Can you believe it? There's a minute six go seconds to go, and a 31 game winning streak is on the line, and we're here watching it. The second best winning streak in modern football when you consider ahead of them that didn't happen yeah. pre -war post World War I is Toledo's 35 game winning streak. That Toledo team was never in the top 10. Only Oklahoma in major football has won this many games in a row. And we are here. Life is good. It's Gerald at the bottom. See if they try to go to him again. On second and 10. They throw high. Slade incomplete. The flag down. Flag down deep in the secondary. It came in the secondary as the ball That's was thrown it. to the left. The Pittsburgh coaches are going absolutely crazy, and I can't tell if they're fired up out of excitement. I think it may be pass interference on Miami. The Pittsburgh coaches were going absolutely crazy because the call was on that side of the field. Mm. I mean, it happened 50, 50 yards away from where the ball was. Yeah. It, it almost has to be a defensive yeah. hold and not pass interference when it's thrown all the way to the other side of where the ball is. That's an automatic first down as well. Another costly penalty here in the last in the closing Holy minutes against on defense, Miami on an eligible pass receiver it's a 10 yard penalty and first down wow wow I'll give you an interesting scenario yeah if Pitt scores do you go for two no 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 okay I just thought I mentioned it uh, just, just, thinking, uh, yeah, just thinking about it question I the only reason is 28 14 you score too late you got some momentum you say go for two I say you know why I, I went one time for, for an overtime and I lost and I said the next time I ever had momentum like that I go for it. the hell with it. They won an overtime this year against Boston College in Pittsburgh. Fitzgerald's the move man from the 25. Rutherford looking his way. Throws underneath. Slade can't hang on. And Alfonso Marshall the junior is around the ball almost every time it comes to the near side. 55 seconds remain in regulation. Ruts are doing a nice job here. I know they've caught some breaks, but doing a good job considering the pressure that he's under. If it's exciting here, how is it in Sooner Nation oh. and Hawkeye oh, Country? Yes. And Buckeye Nation. And out in the Palouse. Do sure. sure. you think some folks are sweaty palmed off their couches watching here tonight? Second and ten. Once again, Fitzgerald the move man. Rutherford locked on this side. Throws for Bynes. Incomplete again. We've had some combination routes run on this side, and nothing's come close to completion. I'll tell you something. This is a test, not only a character, but conditioning. You're out in the heat and humidity. It's, it's almost like running, you know, 20-yard sprints. These, these receivers and these defensive backs are going one-on-one, -on -one, play after play after play, and very few guys are coming in and out of the game. And I got one for you. Total plays. Miami's run 48 plays tonight. This is Pittsburgh's 87th snap. Miami put Orlin Harris in a fresh pass rusher. Number third, 92. Third and 10. Four in the pattern. Underneath Yogi Roth. 
Gains five to the 20. The clock will move. It's fourth and five. They have to get to the 15 for a first down. And they don't need to be at the warp speed here. No, just take it. Call your play. Where is number one, Kirk? Number one's at the slot at the top of the screen here. If you're going to beat the number one team in the nation, try to get the ball to number one. Miami trying to get to 32 get to in a row. Run. Run the first throw down the middle. Hey. Incomplete for Ross. And the Canes survive and keep the championship dream alive. What a tremendous effort by the Pittsburgh Panthers. Guys without their Miami, third, fourth, and fifth th receiving option. Miami survives, and Lee said it, tremendous effort here oh, by, by Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh to come back after everything they were under and just maybe a foot, <laughs> about a foot away from having a chance here to catch that and a point away from kicking it for the tie. Larry Coker. Whoa! Oh. Had all, right, him all, the way. all right, let's go. Here we go. Had him all the way. Victory. I tell you, that's a great oh effort by Walt Harris and his staff in Pittsburgh. But they keep the streak alive. Miami's won 32 games in a row. Next stop, the Carrier Dome in Syracuse in nine days. Two wins from the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl atop the BCS standings. And credit to Pittsburgh. This is a Panther team that has arrived. Pittsburgh earned a lot of respect, I think, tonight, not only in the Big East Conference. Walt Harris has been trying to build this program for the last six years. I don't, you don't want to say they've arrived, but they've taken a step tonight to gain a lot of credibility in this conference. 19 carries, 159 yards. Willis McGahee is our Audi player of the game. Here's Jerry Punch standing on the sideline with the Miami Hurricanes head coach, Larry Coker. Coach, has your heart started beating yet? I mean, what a finish. Well, I tell you, just a great, it's a great football game and a great effort by our team and just a phenomenal effort by Pittsburgh. Obviously, it uh, went down to the final play, and, and uh, but that's what we expected. We expected a tough four-quarter football game. You talked about it being a focus game. Your guys came in very focused early on, but uh, you came up against a very tough uh, Pittsburgh football team. A lot of guts in their defense. Well, no doubt about it. That's why they're one of the top teams in the country. This is not the first time they've played great defense. They've done it, uh, they've done it now for two years. Second half, you guys came out and took care of business. Went right down the field, six plays, put seven on the board. What was the halftime like? Well, halftime was, again, we, we just hadn't made plays. Defensively, we played pretty well, but offensively, we hadn't made plays. We talked about just being ourselves, going out and playing hurricane football, and we'd be fine. Well, Coach, you're two wins away from the Tostitas Fiesta Bowl. Good luck to you. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Mike? Larry Cook is 22-0. His quarterback, Ken Dorsey's 36-1. Willis McGahee helped his Heisman hopes. Pittsburgh put itself on the map tonight. Our final score, Miami 28, Pittsburgh 21. Plenty more coverage coming up on SportsCenter next with Dr. Jerry Punch, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Chris Fowler, Mark Maytrev, Alberts, Mike Tirico. Thanks for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. And don't touch the remote. Here comes SportsCenter.